Well, actually, I had messed it up because I was uh, at work when I was responding. The f- the four uh, goons have uh, armored clothing and uh, blaster pistols, and then the guy who was sled pushing uh, had a slightly better gun, but the same armor. What type of gun? The bodies. It was a heavy blaster pistol. Wait, you want me to... What the bodies? Loot. <laughs> oh. Yes, pick I up... I heard it sounded light, but I, I was saying loot. <laughs> pick up more guns before the cops get here. I'm just <laughs> taking the bandana. We're like dragging their jackets off of them and stuff. <laughs> and I'm wrapping it around my neck to create an ascot. Got it. Okay. Yeah, we can we can uh just gather all the stuff up and put it on the cart that they were toting around and just No, you can't mess with the crime scene. Oh, they gotta see how awesome my grenade was. He took his bandana. That doesn't count. That totally one hundred percent counts. <laughs> <laughs> can we power up the IT to see Fucking yeah, hit the power button. Jesus. What was that, Corey? Sorry, I finally found the stupid emergency repair patch. That's what I've been looking for. Oh. (laughs) I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to hit the power on IT. Yep, you can flip the power on IT, and it, like, takes a second. He does the, like, flickering light eye, Windows 95, the boot up noise or whatever. (laughs) And he, like, sits up, like, mid-sentence, and... uh, it's like he was talking, and then somebody, you know, three P uh, C three PO'd his ass and flipped off because he was being too annoying in the cockpit. And so he <laughs> he like sits up in a jerking motion and goes, "The meaning of this." And then he like <laughs> kind of looks around a bit, and <laughs> then down at the dead bodies all on the floor and goes, "Oh, oh my, oh my." <laughs> Does anyone do anything? Yes. All right. I'll walk right on up to him. Hi there. You must be IT3. My name is Tal, and I've got a whole group of uh, people with me here, and we are the ones that are going to be taking you to Cholgana. Oh. Oh, I see. You must be the ones that Master Roam uh, hired. That's true. So can you tell me anything that happened? Uh, that Do you remember anything before these uh, Rodians kidnapped you? Um, Isotech Security had been hired to deliver me to your ship. Uh, however, we were intercepted in the hallway by these, these ruffians. They uh, made quick work of the guards, and then I tried to explain to them, but they were having none of it. All right, well, a little bump in the road. And we are just about ready to go. I think we have to deal with the local security first. Uh, He kind of looks around at the bodies once again (laughs) and goes, I certainly do believe they will have some questions at the very least. I saved you. (laughs) If everyone would like to wait here, I will go and acquire the... uh, uh, the the guards and have them escorted here. Sure, sounds good, Sam. Alrighty, and I will head my way back to Isotech and look for the guards or wait for them if they have not arrived yet. Sure. Is there anything anybody else wants to do before the guards get here? We already got all the stuff off the bodies, right? It's on the cart? Sure. There was okay. some complaints from... Uh, uh, Papito Chico on that, uh, but he was quickly distracted by a, a bandana, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently easy to pacify him. <laughs> Otherwise... Uh, I'm going up to IT and I'm uh, asking him what happened. Who are these guys? You know, things happen so fast, I didn't quite have a moment to... Uh, ascertain who that was they weren't in the mood for answering any questions and uh yeah they shut me down before i could do much of anything 
That's why I always carry a grenade. That's certainly one strategy that one might employ for that particular sort of situation. However, um... it is the only strategy. Quite. <laughs> Where's um... Rome? Italy? <laughs> He does not know what Rome is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, <laughs> he's he's going to let you know. I did not have any uh, contact with Master Rome since uh, arriving on the wheel. However, in his message he sent to me, he said that he would be preparing uh, to embark to several of Isotech's facilities prior to rendezvousing uh, with yourselves and me on Raxus Prime. Um, I am unaware as to whether he has yet left the station or is still here somewhere. Mm, okay. So we should go Rudy Vu, uh on Raxus Prime? The mission parameters were to rendezvous on Raxus Prime uh, upon uh, searching for or finding any news of the Sadna al or All right, let's go Rudevu. Considering this complication, it might be a possibility to go there first, but I feel that uh, considering the nature of that facility, he wouldn't want anyone drawing undue attention to it if we had no real news to update. So we should not Rudevu. I believe our best course of action would be to send a message back to Isotech or leave one with their facilities here and then uh, set out on the mission that we've been assigned. All right, I look at Pepito. Uh, you know what, Boomy? I think that ass got going in your head. I just <laughs> lovingly admire it around my neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I roll my eyes. <laughs> Sam, uh, four or five guards in wheel security uh, uniform show up for you. All right. Uh, Sam will greet them, uh, looking a bit haggard and worse for wear because he actually got pretty fucked up in that fight. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the beauty of taking a bunch of damage and having very low threshold. Um, <clears throat> well, you have so much so brawn, you see. Yeah, I know so much. I've Can we get brawn. some bars on his token? Whenever you get a second. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, they don't show up. Oh, that's right. I swapped his token. I had a different art for him originally. Oh, well, on IT? Or on me? On Sam. I see my bars. Everyone sees their own bars. Can everyone see everyone no, else's I see bars? It. Yeah, I can see everyone else's bars. Yes. I didn't see yes. Sam's before, but, but now I, I do. Yeah, we're okay. good. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yeah, so Sam, yeah, so I'll uh, go and greet the guards. Uh, hello, I am a part of the group that was hired by Mr. Roam from the Isotech. We received a call saying that there was a, a break in, a theft or something. Uh, yes, uh, a group of Rodians attempted to uh, abscond with the droid that we were to be taking to uh, the area on our mission. And uh, if you look inside the Isotech offices, there are two unconscious guards on the on the desk of Mr. Roam. And my group and I subdued uh, <laughs> the uh, the culprits uh, within the hangar uh, just over this way. All right, since there's five of them, two of them are going to head into the Isotech Laboratories, and if you're attempting to lead back to the hangar, the other three will follow you, Sam. I will lead them back. Three guards. Hi, show. guys. It looks a lot worse than it really is. Rudians always shoot first. <laughs> Hmm. 
Must not use a destiny point for this. Must not use a destiny point for this. <laughs> uh, you can see that, as I have told you, uh, we have subdued the gang of Rodians and gotten the You're property welcome. of Mr. Roam back. Uh, the droid uh, IT3 can back up our statements. At that point, like just about any three series protocol droid, he's going to chime up whether his attention is requested or not and start chipping in classic 3PO style and be like, yes, yes, it was quite um, mm, a rambunctious uh, little episode. They they jumped me in the hallway and were attempting to uh, commandeer me and put me aboard their ship, I believe. And, you know, one or two of the guards is going to kind of walk over and give the old toe of the boot poke to the the Rodians on the ground there. The Rodians on the ground there. Um, and another one, the one that hangs back, is going to start calling back to the desk to pull footage uh, from the security system in uh, Hangar 47 here. I address the one that's pulling footage. Well, I'm sure you guys have a lot of paperwork to fill out that really just doesn't really involve us. So we're just going to head on out. I start to like back up towards the exit. Now, now hang on there. Uh, you know, there's, there's bound to be footage that uh, clears all of this up. So we, we can either hang out here for just a moment or we can just go ahead and have everyone come on back down to the security checkpoint. Uh, but there's there's no reason to go sneaking off just yet, especially if uh, if what you say is true. Of course it's true, and I take offense to you thinking that I would sneak anywhere. Rudians always shoot first. <laughs> uh if if I may, we do in fact have a timeline upon our uh, requested mission from Mr. Roam. Uh, we have to rudevu. Uh, <laughs> it's a, like visibly size. Uh, I don't know if a droid could sigh, but he doesn't. And uh, please, please forgive my small companion, but we we do have a deadline to meet. Uh, if we could hurry this up in any way, it would be much appreciated. Uh, you guys said you piled all the guns onto the cart, right? No, 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 no. Uh, he, he made a good point. Don't fuck with the crime scene. So we didn't take right. anything yet, Just... except for the fucking ascot. <laughs> <laughs> it know. looks beautiful on me. Uh, the two guards that are, you know, checking out the air quotes crime scene uh, will, in fact, pick up the weaponry from the uh, dead bodies. Um the one that's calling back to the station finishes his call. Um, a moment later, the Kodo, since you're kind of near the hallway, you can see that one of the guards has taken up, like, is on guard outside of Isotech while the other one's still poking around in the lobby. The door to Isotech is still wide open at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and then if there's no attempts at fleeing or anything. A moment later, you'll hear, you know, over his little arm uh, pip boy or whatever you want to call it, that the station says that they've pulled the uh, the data for the video feed on Hangar 47 in the last 20 minutes and are playing it back now. Fingers crossed, guys. Any, any attempts yeah. at any craziness? <laughs> ah, we're good. I'm, I'm looking good. at my watch, does, tapping does, my foot impatiently. Does anyone tell them that the actual, like, droid capture happened in the hallway and that they should check that footage? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's actually a good point. Um, Wait, droid capture happened in Isotech, right? No, he got... Confused. Well, the droid in, said he was captured was like... in the hallway. Yeah, the droid said he was captured in the hallway and it oh. uh, knocked out. And then when he Sorry. woke up, was here. Uh, out of character, it would seem that they jumped the droid in the hallway on the way to your hangar and then took the guards. Remember, they used the guard to get past the bioscan into Isotech. Okay. Yeah, uh, Sam will speak up. I'm not uh, trying to give you the answers. I'm just. 
uh, forgive me, but you may want to check the uh, footage from the hallway just outside of Isotech. Uh, the droid IT3 did mention that that is where the Rodians uh, jumped him and his guards. All right. Um, since we are in general under time constraint, I will go ahead and fast forward through him calling and that happening. And it'll it'll burn probably 20, 25 minutes of your time. But eventually the the group of you are released uh, because there is um, video evidence of the attack happening and that it appears that y'all were simply rec reclaiming your property. Um, there's a little bit of conversation that happens with Master Com. Remember, there's an AI that runs the whole station. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it eats up like a half hour in, in classic, like, come on, cop, why are you taking so long to give me a ticket for 57 <laughs> and a 55? Uh, but eventually y'all are released to include uh, IT3. Um, and it appears that they are, um, like I said, there's still a guard standing outside of Isotech if you guys come out into the hallway. During that time, because uh, I know emergency repair patches are for uh, just for like quick heal. Uh, can I like start repairs on myself during this whole 25 to 30 minute period? Yeah. Guys, I think we should grab the probe before we go so they don't try to steal it again. Uh, the probe won't be much use to us. Uh, it has given us all the information that it can, and it should be guarded well enough with an isotech. They did not get into the area where the probe was. But next time, my grenades won't be here. Yes, but I'm sure that uh, the guards here and Mr. Roam will probably beef up security considering the situation. I just tilt my head and shrug. Plus, I believe that Mr. Roam told us that he wished for the probe to remain where it is. All right. All right. All you right. say probe. Are you talking about the the message pod? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, just making sure. Okay. I was yeah, I didn't just get a either. little fuzzy. I was wondering what that was supposed to be. <laughs> All right. Thought cool. we'd have some fun back on the ship, guys. Are we back on our way? Are we, are we back on track here? <laughs> Um, Your room's on the other side of the ship, right? Like, far away from where I sleep. <laughs> so, at this point, it is up to you guys. Uh, you guys are released back. You can jump in your ship and take off. You have a general vector uh, that Sam was able to pull from the pod. Uh, but this is your last chance to do any uh, buying stuff, uh, research, any, you know, going to the casino to buy or to win four credits, uh, whatever you guys want to do. If you leave the station, like we leave the station and we start doing other things. So you're in civilization, last chance. I think we're good. Uh, I'm good. I, 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 enough word. I do just want to stop by the droid repair shop or whichever place it is that sells them and just buy five uh, emergency repair patches. Okay. Now is not the time for shopping, Sam. <laughs> Now is exactly the Do it on your own time. Uh, all the time oh, is my that? time. <laughs> Good one. Uh, I think I'd like to stop by um, Calm again. And I just, I don't know if this is even possible. Maybe not. I'm just going to try. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to see where the Rodians ship, like their trajectory when they left? Did they just try to like quick escape whoever it was? Like they realized their plan failed and they left, or did they have a certain direction they were going? Um, are you? Do you just? Do they follow like flight patterns out of the wheel? Like how does that might not even be possible? But yeah. So do you do you ask the avatar of Mastercom, or are you like using the? Are you trying to like use the computer console? What what nature are you proceeding? This. Yeah, I'm talking to the AI. Sorry, uh, Mastercom. Yeah. Just no worries. Uh, if you ask Mastercom, the you know the hologram is going to very politely inform you uh, that it is against his protocols to divulge the information mm -hmm. of of other ships and their trajectories strictly for uh, 
uh, personal information reasons. It's uh, everyone trusts in the wheel and that their uh, information here is protected. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds good. Bant up, Poodoo. Can I try and win four more credits? <laughs> Roll a D100. Do it. Ooh. Except you were supposed to roll low on that one. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, you can have 17 credits. Yeah! But it'll eat up another half hour to 45 minutes of party time. <laughs> <laughs> No, hey, should. they were doing stuff. It's fine. I'm just letting you know. It, it takes at least a half hour. So Sam goes buy stuff. You decide to hit the the, uh, the casinos. IT3 wants to go back to the ship, but is not going back alone. Uh, so he will stay with the group um, until somebody heads back to the ship. Um, last call on anything on the wheel. I'm good. I'm good. So. I'm good. Do they have gambling addiction counseling for Zamira? <laughs> sure, you could download a program and run it on the ship. I'm hey, good. I've won like 21 credits this trip. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> nice. Um, Drinks are on you next time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, if there's no more research you guys want to do, you can get on the ship and take off. Uh, yes. As I mentioned in Discord, there are two options at this point. You can make a slower, more controlled jump out there by following the trade route, jumping out of hyperspace, adjusting, plotting your course for Cholgana, and then jumping again. Or you can make a, we know where the coordinates of this planet are, and we are jumping straight there harder but faster check and stronger do we know the travel time for like one versus the other uh like an estimation i know seriously, the estimation no one had a sex joke they wanted to say after that. like seriously you guys <laughs> sorry i'm, I'm disappointed well i i wasn't what? disappointed I'm not paying attention. Well, the ship's already been missing for, what, like 20-something years, so... <laughs> yeah. It's missing for a few more days. It's not the end of the world, but... I know the difference time. in time on a Class 1 hyperdrive, but I believe you guys said you had a Class 2, and I would have to go look yep. to see what the difference is. Um, the... Um, it is 48 hours on the trade route, and then 24 hours on the second jump with a Class 1 drive... Um, the straight jump is currently an unknown to you, uh, length, but would probably shave at least 10 or so hours off the, uh, trip. Actually, since you have a class two drive, we're going to call it 15. Well, as far as like stealth goes, if we don't want someone following us, does it is one better going to be specifically better than the other? If you don't want someone following you, two jumps makes it harder because you will be pointed in one direction, jump out, and jump another direction. Whereas a single jump, you would be pointed at it mm -hmm. basically. I'm cool with two jumps. What do you guys want to do? Gives us more time to heal. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, the two jumps is definitely a better move. Plus, like, uh, my a little bit. Yeah, and the the information that I got only helps us after we get out of the trade route. So if we make a straight jump there, I don't think that that helps at all. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. because okay, the that. trade route is is unrelated to the data you pulled from the pod. Right. Okay. As the guy who cool. wants to believe he's the best pilot here, I completely agree. <laughs> well, you're not going to do much piloting from the other hangar. <laughs> he's like he's like wait for me i'm the pilot 
I spent all my like XP this time on piloting, it. so. <laughs> Maybe I should have talked to Rick first. <laughs> um, who wants to believe he's the best pilot? Didn't say he is. <laughs> I did go ahead and throw Cholgana in the location library for y'all, but you did not do mm. too much research on it, so you have a very vague... Um, placeholder I, I did roll i did roll a pretty solid check last game where i found out quite a bit about it and relate it to the party yeah i mean little things like uh orbital metrics to to know how long the days are stuff like that y'all didn't oh, end right, up right, right, right. doing that kind of research so the information that you have on the wheel is much more in-depth than cholgana but you do have a cholgana page and i can update it as Y'all figure more stuff out. Um, but what I need from y'all, if you take off in your uh, cheeky Minoc and uh, get on the trade route, is I need whoever is piloting to make an average two purple astrogation check. For astrogation, I have one yellow, one green. Let me check. I feel like mine should be higher than it is, but I'm the dummy who didn't fill out his character sheet, so that's my problem. You <laughs> only have had one three green. weeks to do it. I know. As far as astrogation goes, actually, I've got one yellow and three green. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, maybe you should do astrogation. I, I'm higher in like the actual piloting of it. Yeah, so just remember the person at the air quote wheels... Uh, does not necessarily need to be the one doing astrogation. They're just the one flying, but somebody needs mm -hmm. to, you know, plot the course in a nav that. computer. So if yeah, Koto and Tali want to be in pilot and co-pilot seats and uh, Sam's in the back plugging stuff into the nav computer, then so be it. Sweet. All right, so I'm doing astrogation? Mm -hmm. Average. Two purple. What? Well, God damn it! Well, I did it again. Okay. What? I keep oh, forgetting that, like, if you're oh, still okay. clicked on the thing where you type in, it. it fucking <laughs> ruins it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, neither succeed nor fail, but a whole bunch of advantage. Uh, I don't particularly have too many ways to spend that advantage here, based on the stuff that the book gives me. Uh, because I have things for, like, threats and uh, uh, triumph. But since you have so many advantages, um, we're going to say you're closer on timeline than you expected. Uh, so we'll call it, I forgot what Class 2 drive was going to do already. Uh, let's call it, like, an even... 55 hours of travel time. Um, during that time, is there anything you guys want to do? Are you talking to IT3? Or is there any preparation you want to make? Or does everyone just play chess and watch YouTube? Uh, well, I need to repair myself. <laughs> first things first, I got to strip down to my fur day suit so I'm comfortable for the ride. <laughs> I'll leave the ascot on, though. And uh, oh, you're where? Around. <laughs> <laughs> my neck where it belongs uh we recover one wound per day right uh that is a good question that i was trying I to look up i looked it up earlier and i forgot already yeah i'm sure you get whatever equal to a long rest right if it's a week you get to roll for the critical wound and i think it or a critical injury i believe it is one a day i'll look it up again sure i was that's why i was passing the ball off to y'all so that i could go look to see on that healing Yeah, I want to chat with IT3. Just, uh, so he's hanging out on the ship, and we're obviously flying and all that great stuff. I will just ask him, so, you were on this famous ship, huh? I did serve some time with uh, Captain Harsall during the era of the Clone Wars. I've lucked out in not having my memory, uh, wiped in a number of years so i still um 
Oh God, his name's Boomy now. Uh, <laughs> I, I still have quite a bit of information from my time served with Captain Harsall as well as Rome's father, Ropok. Awesome. I am very interested to uh, hear all about that. Or if you have it, maybe in some sort of digital form, we can download it so that everybody can kind of be briefed on what's going on. Is there any specific questions you have for him? Yeah, sorry. I just realized you're probably trying to look stuff up, so I didn't want to like get into so much detail that you're trying to do like three things at once. <laughs> uh, he has the uh, correct information on one wound per night's rest. Uh, so make sure y'all guys are doing that. It's page 219 in the book. Also, thank you, Helian. Is that three wounds or two then? Like Samira asks. Uh, call it three. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Does that work for a droid? I believe so. Even though they don't like droids, naturally them. repair themselves. Yeah. 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 Like what? What it is is like basically whenever Sam like shuts down, uh, a bunch of like little arms pop out of different parts of his body and sit there and just like repair like all the broken parts and stuff like that. So you like have magical little elves that pop out of you at night? Like, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, yeah. That's creepy. I hope your room is also on the other side of the ship. I don't even think that he actually has a room. He probably just like stands in a corner somewhere. Just punches like, shuts over. Off. <laughs> yeah. right. Every time you shut off, I'm going to get a big blanket. I'm just going to throw it over you. <laughs> <laughs> But you're off, so you don't know it's me. <laughs> Put a new hat on him every time. Oh my god, I'm totally gonna do that. I'm gonna find oh, like can't. magnets and put them on him in random places. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a dick move. Also, my hat is welded to my head. No, not really. Get the word magnets so you can make poems. <laughs> oh, I'm totally getting like <laughs> mini ones, and then I'll put them like on his back. <laughs> Just one day he's walking around and fucking if he ever takes his coat off it just says kick me. <laughs> his back. Yes. Yes. That is, that is a thing. Would I notice something like that? The magnets fuck with me at all? Because that'd be fucking hilarious <laughs> if I woke up and I was like there's something messed up. <laughs> Something's wrong. Your memory's getting wiped from the magnet. Oh god, please no. No. <laughs> wouldn't put them on your head just like underneath things and like how do you know where his hard drive is oh that's a good point then i don't know (laughs) yeah you might ruin my whole character just by fucking around with magnets (laughs) let's do it Ooh, here we go that's the best you get while i was reading about droids uh tally the droid it3 Mm -hmm. uh as he likes to be called it3 uh, we'll let you know that he spent a lot of time uh, working with uh, both Ropok and Captain Harsall. Uh, but, you know, luckily or unfortunately, it depends on the way that you look at it, I suppose. Um, I was not aboard the Sadnala Or upon its uh, faithful journey toward the Outer Rim. So once Ropok uh, disappeared, I considered myself... Uh, now in service of his son. I reported to the Isotech Laboratories on on the wheel and began working directly with Roam. Um, he found my... Uh, he found my services quite useful in maintaining many of the older contacts that his father had uh, between the uh, business as they did not immediately trust Roam, but they knew that I had been working with Isotech and thus were more comfortable. Is that why Ropak left you behind? I don't like to think of it as being left behind. Uh, I was working uh, for Ropak and had been previously engaged and was not expecting him to be on a ship that suddenly found itself fleeing from the uh, newly formed empire. It was, Mm. I suppose you would call it just uh, 
a misunderstanding or unfortunate circumstances. It was just, you know, bad timing. Circumstance. Okay. 40 years. That's a lot of time to be collecting information. It certainly has served me well in uh, organizing many business deals for Isotech, yes. And what type of man was Captain Harsel? In which ways? Uh, let's see, in your professional opinion of his capacity to lead. Captain Harsal was, uh, he had quite the capacity for leading. That's what uh, served him so well during the Clone Wars. And one of the reasons that there were uh, more than two dozen, wait, no, four dozen, uh, more than four dozen uh, individuals willing to remain on the ship and flee from the Empire rather than uh, simply giving up once they heard his his plan to uh, take the Sadnala or and escape from the uh, clutches of this newly established uh, government. Okay, change tack a little bit. Um, IT3, what do you know about Cholgana? Cholgana is a world on the outer rim that has no permanent uh, population to any recorded knowledge or any recorded uh, databases. Uh, there are transients who go to the planet for big game hunting and other um, less than legal activities as it exists far outside even the uh, outer rim uh, organizations. No particular uh, government or even crime organization lays claim to the planet. All right. Other than keeping an eye on us, why do you think Roam sent you with us? You think you would be helpful to us in finding the ship? As I have not had my memory wiped in uh, 40 years, I would not only be able to identify Captain Harsal and the members of the Sadnala Or. I would serve to prove to them that you are more than just uh, treasure hunters looking to get rich off the um, the supposed treasury inside the ship. It would drive a clear link from you to Roam and thus Isotech, uh, giving them reason to believe that you who you are who you say you are, rather than simply vagrants or get rich quick schemers. Does Roam still think that they're alive? Roam is a very cunning individual, and he knows that it is best to plan for every opportunity uh, rather than simply send you, since I was doing nothing of particular import for Isotech at the moment. He deemed it worthy to um, have this particular uh, venture have the most uh, likelihood of succeeding rather than the group of you finding the ship but not being able to convince uh, Roam or not Roam, Ropak or Harsal should they be alive that Isotech is still in existence and willing to uh, continue on with their plans. Hedging his bets, I get it. All right, cool. That's all the questions I have for him now. Indeed. <clears throat> oh, boy. It's going to be really weird if they're all still alive after all this time. <laughs> Anything else during leg one of the journey? Uh, no, I'm going to use a repair patch just to make sure I'm at Optimal stiff, just putting that out there. I was planning on modding one of my weapons, but I have to reread all the rules because it's so fucking complicated. So I'll go ahead and pass for now. There's the modification picture in the, it's like one of the bottom ones on Discord. Yeah, I'm rereading the rules right now too. I, I'm already at the page. It's just. Oh, yeah. Let, let me know what you find because I need to. 
do that as well if if I can get some modifications for my pistol. Copy. Otherwise, um, once an appropriate amount of time has passed, the ship will jump out of uh, light speed towards the end of the uh, trade route and you will plot the course that you had, the vector that you had, Sam. Uh, it is a hard astrogation check, so three purple. Uh, and then there is two setback die. However, you have... I remove one setback and add two boost. <laughs> yep. So three purple, one black, uh, two blue. Um, while he's doing that, quick question. So it's pretty standard ship, right? Our ship, like, is Fuck. there's no like quirks about it or anything. In what way? Other than that, it's bright orange. <laughs> I was just gonna say that during that other ship, other um, timing of it, I just wanted to like familiarize myself with the ship and if it has any like little quirks or needs any extra help or anything. Um. For all intents and purposes, you have a it's stock YV-560. I need to do more reading cool. on the actual ship. Um, okay, no uh, worries there. Steven had the book that the ship's from. I, I have it on the shelf as well. I don't have it in front of me right now. but No worries. Uh, okay. Yeah. I already picked my bunk, guys. So, dibs. <laughs> Yeah, I'm picking my bunk as well. That's where Sam his Sam sleeps in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna be awkward. He shuts, he shuts himself down what? in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> like, so like every time you guys get up oh in the middle gosh. of the night and have to go to the bathroom, you just open the door. And there's all these little arms like repairing him and doing shit, and he's just like standing there. Are you like totally oblivious to as to what like? The purpose that room serves or like uh, no i maybe not i don't know i was just making a joke but it's still funny no, and i'm gonna like keep perfect. it yeah <laughs> i throw towels on top of him <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna use him to wipe my butt man there's, uh, there's so much no i mean like he's there's no way that you can that that bathroom's way too small he take like you try to go into the bathroom and he's just standing there there's no way to get in I'm a tiny little guy. Moving on. <laughs> um, man, you keep giving me these boring just yeah, I know. Shows. <laughs> I'm I'm reading up on things that y'all can do in the interim real quick. Good thing is, is that I haven't actually like gotten any failures or any like that's, fucking. That's true, like, and yeah. that's basically what I'm complaining about. Like, there's nothing to do with the successes, <laughs> and the fact that you don't get successes doesn't mean you fail because, like, you get there eventually. But it gives me a whole bunch of options on things that I could do with triumphs and failures, and uh, oddly enough, despairs. Even though the check does not have any dice that would roll a despair. This is why I made a purely intellect-based character, because I knew we were going to need it. <laughs> Are you calling me dumb? No, <laughs> what? Not it? No, not at all. You know, we don't just have, like, a weird grenade fucking, uh, and ascot happy <laughs> fucking weirdo in the group and some big fucking... Hey, I actually have three there. intelligence, okay? I just, I don't use it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's Would put... it be possible... Uh, and I don't, I don't know if this is a thing I can do, but I still have that encounter with the, the droid that seemed to be poking around at the ship, mm -hmm. you know, yep. back at the place. Is there anything I can do to, like, I don't know, monitor diagnostics or listen to the radio or something to try to be like, hey, is, are we being tracked? Is there something off here? Like, is everything good? Or is, like, there's something seems to be not right? Yes, and you can... Let me look at a character sheet real quick. I'm a decent mechanic as well if you need a helping hand. Yeah, same here. Ooh. Can fit in the nooks and crannies that you guys can't. Hey man, Perfect. I have robot arms. I've got like bender arms, okay? I can just like... <laughs> 
You can uh, make a computer check, uh, but I'm not going to tell you what the bad dice are. So just roll a regular computer check to run through various uh, ship systems and stuff. In fact, uh, being that you have uh, ship experience, you can slap a boost on there. Oh boy. Hey. Can I, uh, uh, well, never mind. What you got? I was going to say, can either me or uh, Boomy give him a helping hand? I can't help with computers. I mean, I can, uh, but I, it's not my forte. I'm pretty good with computers. I suppose, like, it would make sense for me to be like, guys, this thing happened. You did not never actually as... tell them that. So yeah. I was, yeah. I was yeah. waiting on Cause, it. Just because we got wrapped up in the chasing things down and... Life comes Ooh. at you fast. Secrets. Yeah. Um, so you don't fail. You are actually successful in this task. Uh, however, there are there are two threats lying around that I will use appropriately. Um, and I'm going to say that the threats are that you do not discover this until your second jump. And on your second jump, uh, in that moment that you hop out of hyperspace, adjust, and jump back in, you realize that something attached to your ship sent out a signal. What? Rut row. Of course, we don't know that. Right. So Kodo does not realize this until on the second jump, something broadcast your location and vector as you made the second jump into hyperdrive. Okay. So are we actually at that point? Are we second? Like, are we all like at the second jump point now, or are we still doing things before that happens? You are. You are at the second. Like, you guys are headed in the direction of Cholgana currently. Okay. Uh, in fact, if there is no immediate actions, I'm going to put you all at within the hour. You are set to come out of uh, hyperspace. So take final actions before jumping out of hyperspace. I'm good. I'm waiting on modifying. It's too difficult for my low level. Copy. Uh, do you relay this information to yeah, us? Yeah, I was gonna say. You know, Wait, when do we when do we find out? I imagine I could hop on. There's like an intercom, right? You all are in your rooms. I'm in the bathroom. Whenever you want, but it happened <laughs> on the second jump. Yeah. Like so I'd okay, say, I'm sorry. On the guys. Jump, we are in hyperspace, headed to T Cholgana. When we stop, we will be like orbiting Cholgana. Yes. Yep. Ah, shit. Of course. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we chose two jumps. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're being followed, or at the very least tracked, when we were, uh, you know, at the wheel. I noticed a droid messing around with the ship. I tried to figure out what it was doing. It went to the repair shop. Sort of was called, right? The, I mean, that's what yeah, it was, dented right? droid, yeah. It was, and uh, as best as I was told and as, as the person there could would tell me, everything was normal and it didn't do anything to my ship. It was just making its normal rounds. But I've just noticed that there's something on the ship sending our location out. So... Maybe we might have some company. Can we get it off the ship? <laughs> yes. Not, uh, not in hyperdrive. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, probably not once you come out of hyperdrive, unless somebody has a spacesuit. Uh, droid here. I don't need to breathe. This is true. Uh, you can totally go out the airlock in space. But not during hyperdrive, though. <laughs> I mean, you can try. <laughs> no, I homie, would, I'm not. Uh, uh I'd love to see what happens if we open up the airlock and hyperdrive. Do we just all immediately just vaporize? Probably. I mean, that's why it's an airlock. It's got two doors. You're not rolling down the fucking Camaro window at 200 miles an hour. <laughs> Is the interior airlock designed to hold up against like the stress of light speed, though? You know, that's totally something that oh, I'm man. not going to Google right now. Mm -hmm. Can I pull some like fancy flying stuff where we're like going off the beaten path a little bit, and then we kind of can double back once we get rid of the tracker? 
You I can... mean, I can just unplug the hyperdrive and plug it back in again. That, that would works. be the same thing, right? <laughs> you can reroute your course so that you fly past Tolgana or stop short of Tolgana or, you know, turn now or something. You can fly somewhere mm -hmm. else and come out of uh, hyperdrive, adjust accordingly, send the droid out to look for it or whatever. Those are all things that you can do. Uh, but I must warn you that, of course, I will be tracking the amount of time that it takes to do all of that. Well, we went the slow way around, so we're not yeah. too worried about time. Right. <laughs> now I'm we're going to show up and someone will be dead. I'm show just up. just letting you know that I am very specifically tracking time that y'all spent on the wheel and time Rip that it takes y'all to get... <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> time that y'all take here, so... Yeah, do with that as you will. Do you Would wanna... it be a piloting check if I want to, like, or astrogation check again? Um, to change course slightly in order to since it's a hyperdrive uh, modification, you're changing the the route. It would be an astrogation check. Um, oh, darn it. If if you oh, wanted to. <laughs> If you wanted to get somewhere and then start flying in space outside of hyperdrive and you were just flying, then anything you flew in space would be flying and anything you flew on the, or piloting rather, and anything you flew like within the atmosphere would be piloting. Okay. Um, uh, what do you guys want to do? Are you cool with like stopping short, trying to get rid of the tracer and then moving on or... Just could... move on and deal with whoever follows us. Yeah, team vote. You can always like, feel fly like... to a different planet and chuck the tracker on that planet, and that would give you some right. piloting and stuff like that. But the more people that follow us, the more XP we get. So. <laughs> and apparently time is a factor. So. A yeah, I'll vote, I'll vote here. for us to just go. Because... Um, the ship isn't we know we already know that the ship isn't actually at Cholgana. That was the last known coordinates that it was at. Mm -hmm. So we still have to track the ship the ship from Cholgana. So right. if if we if we come out there um I can remove the tracker and then we can see if we get waylaid by somebody and continue forward. And if we don't, then we're in the clear and we can just move towards the saw Nala or. Yeah, I agree. Sounds Seems good. like a reasonable Koto, plan. Samira. Yeah, it sounds good. Sure. All right, let's do it. We'll deal with whoever's following us when it happens. Sorry, I just saw that somebody linked on Discord the rolling down the window in, in light speed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, I missed It's just uh, someone on Reddit asked in Ask Science Fiction, uh, what would happen if I... Oh, is it what's the actual <laughs> question? What would happen if I opened an airlock oh, and stepped reading. outside oh, yeah. while on light speed? Okay, we all have 10 more experience. Mm -hmm. So Can we spend it now? No. Um... <laughs> I'll, I will let you have spent the five on the, the flight, but you do not actually get the second five until y'all have done something with the tracking device. It's all right. I need 20 anyways. Well, then you should start killing your teammates. <laughs> mm. Tally, we are good friends. You should let me do this. I'm sure if you tell all of them to gather in the cockpit because you need to show them something, a single grenade would get you quite a bit of extra. <laughs> But why use a single Go, grenade yeah. when I have three? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Wait, there's nothing here three. except this grenade. Boom! <laughs> uh, just drop three and then fucking, like, <laughs> close the fucking shield doors or whatever and just watch us all fucking explode out into hyperspace. With friends like these, who needs enemies? I mean enemies. <laughs> uh, Alright, so what's the plan to get rid of the tracker? Alright, so... Uh, our... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I guess uh, we're all agreeing that we're just going to uh, go where we're going. As soon as we drop out of hyperspace, I'll head outside and freaking, you know, I'll connect myself some sort of way. I'm assuming there's like cables or something that I can use to t tether myself to the ship and I'll go out and find the tracker and remove it. 
we could just wait till we land. Well, we're not. Yeah, we're not sure if we're going to yet, right? I mean, we. Yeah, because again, probably, like, yeah. Uh, again, all we know is that Cholgana was the last known location. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's actually on Cholgana. So that's that's an issue. Well, I can hold my breath a really long time if you need help. <laughs> uh, I don't think holding your breath in space actually works. I'm definitely not <laughs> spacewalking. Well, he's got that ascot to help protect him from it's cold. True. Yeah, it won't get too cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like 10,000 below fucking negative <laughs> degrees. It's fucking, it's not too cold. All right, so we, f we followed our uh, same plan, and then once we came out of hyperspace, we were orbiting Cholgana and decided to get rid of the tracker. That's what do you we think want to, like, is search? happening. Is there anything we can do with the tracker, like search it or anything? Or do you, you guys think we should just destroy it right away? I guess we could always try to plant it somewhere else. Yeah, but then we'd have to go somewhere else to plant it. Yeah. I mean, we could just put it on Sam and then give him a shove. Yeah. There you go. Kick him at the airlock. You could just remove it from the ship and then leave it wherever we're at and then take off. I'm not just a piece of property, you guys. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I mean, whoever is following us is going to obviously come right to that spot. So depending on, we, we can just, we've already decided that we're just going to be prepared for whatever comes. So we could might as well just destroy it there because they're going to go to that last We place. could always just try to like take out the battery and then just keep it if we need it later i mean yeah disable well, it they're gonna go to that spot anyway so right so i'll i'll spacewalk and go out on the ship and uh try to find the tracker wherever it's at and then um sounds good and try to All disable right. it so i'm finding one really long power cable and tying it around my waist and then i'm handing the other hand other end to sam I shake my head. <laughs> All right. You guys ready for this? I have a uh, story oh. input. All right. Unless, quick question. what was that, Tully? Sorry, quick question. Um, this might be like reading way too much into it. Should I turn the ship and position it so that it's facing the direction that we came in case someone comes in head on? That way we're not like being taken by surprise. Uh, I'm going to give you, that is a valid question. However, the next thing that I tell you will you can adjust according ready okay yep all right so as the star lines begin to fade and you leave faster than light travel um and enter real space everything goes ballistic every all the sensors on the ship immediately start going haywire there's flashing lights kodos you know deafened by klaxons blaring an alarm you know tons of noise tons of light something is wrong the ship kind of like shutters almost and a quick glance out the uh, front windows show that um, you are in some kind of cloud and what you you see you see a single star which you assume to be Chol, and it's it's only a dim hazy disc through this thick uh, vapor cloud that you're in you don't actually see any other stars aside from uh, uh, the the one that you're near uh, you do not see any other stars, and you do not see the planet Cholgana or any planet. Uh, but all of the sensors appear overwhelmed and and jammed by this uh, this nebula cloud that you have you have exited hyperspace uh, into. Oh boy, Death Star was here. Ooh. Does it seem like we're in imminent danger, though? Like debris hitting our ship. Nothing Nothing has impacted the ship in the couple of seconds that you've come out of hyper... Like, you made, okay. you made a controlled, this is when we want to slow down, this is where the planet should be exit. Like, mm -hmm. you weren't yanked out of hyperspeed because you entered an asteroid field or something. Okay. Are alarms going throughout the ship, or am I just hanging out in my bunk? That Not depends. a care in the world. That depends on how you guys want your ship to be set up. There are definitely alarms going in the cockpit. I would say shipwide alarms are good. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, this is an interesting turn of events. There's no planet for us to go to. You don't see the planet. Um, 
and I will let you know that all your sensors are currently jammed and well I already said that all your sensors are currently jammed by this nebula that you're in and are going to take some adjusting to compensate for the amount of gas and dust in this cloud and we're not talking like a small cloud like it's it's a huge takes up a, a sizable chunk of this star system from what you can tell um, so if someone is trying to recalibrate all those fancy dishes on the front of your ship i need a hard three purple die uh computer check i'll do it yeah not me <laughs> definitely not me I, I got two green i ain't doing nothing for that now koto do you know exactly where the tracker is might as well stick to the plan while we got this going on I'm going to assume i don't know where it is you just know it's on there somewhere yeah, it would be logical based on the size of the droid that you encountered to assume it's on the bottom, though. Yeah, I was gonna say I know it was somewhere on the bottom. Okay. Probably, you know, I don't know if I would be able to say like, "Oh, the droid was definitely at this spot" because I just saw him kind of wandering away. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's okay. gonna be on the underside of the ship. Rick, I'll also give you that since you were in the cockpit for a large chunk of that time, I specifically asked that you can you know that it's not on the two arms of the ship that poke forward because you would have seen it from the cockpit. So it's somewhere on the bottom of the main body of the ship. I will relay that information. <laughs> uh, Blah. Sam, your computer check means that the adjustments were going to take about five minutes. However, your three successes are going to decrease uh, that down to three minutes. Um, Nice. Sensors are going to be completely useless until that three minutes has passed. However, your two threats mean that uh, sorry, I misread. I jumped between two lines. Uh, your two threats means that it's only a partial success. Uh, had it only been one threat, you would have been fine. Uh, but you're going to tinker with them for three minutes and they're only going to be partially fixed. So I'll need a second check from you. All right, uh, Sam, three hard. Uh, right, three purple. Since it's a subsequent quick, uh, check, go ahead and we'll bump it down to two. It doesn't say this in the book, but that'll make me feel better. All right. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go ahead and have you spend a, another three solid minutes mucking with that. Um, it is also worth note that the dust is going to interfere with any visual sights. So any, mm. any perception checks out the front windows, you're going to have to add two setback die to them. Um, give it the six to eight minutes it takes Sam to fix the sensors and you guys can begin scanning for the planet. Um, it will take about, uh... 30 minutes, you think, to get out of the cloud if you guys want to start flying the ship. Uh, the nearest edge, based on your partially working sensors, you think it, it's about a 30-minute straight shot there. All right, guys, we're flying partially blind, but I think it might be worth it to start making our way that direction. I, like I do want to try making a perception check out the window, seeing if I can spot anything in the debris. Anything out of the ordinary. And I have acute senses, so I get to remove up to two setback dice. Wow, okay. nice. Um, uh, go ahead. Do I have add any purples to it? or? Yeah, we're going to set it at two purple. Mm. Apparently roll 20 likes the three successes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Good job on the successes, though. <laughs> Yeah, but threats are still bad. <laughs> they could still be very, very bad. All right, it's not broken. That just means I strained my eyes as I was looking. It's all right, guys. <laughs> Roll20 does actually have other options. Uh, so, um, what's your name today? Boomy. Boomy, uh, while everyone else is, you know, 
hacking away at controls and Sam's realigning sensors and, and all this craziness, you decide to look out the window like a smart person would do. And when you look out the window, you spend a couple of moments uh, like straining your eyes and looking through the dust and you begin to see small clusters of boulder sized uh, meteoroids, right? It looks like asteroids or meteorites or something. There are, there are lumps in the cloud as it were. And you see at least a half a dozen uh, boulder sized, you know, six to 10 foot large rocks. Well, I just point at them and say big rocks. Oh, shit. All right, guys, so we got rocks incoming. Brace yourselves. Shields I just think, up? how far away are they? Do we have, like, do we brace and then we just wait and wait and wait? <laughs> um, Boomy, they're, there's not a good, like, how far are they? They're they're all around. You are You are in the middle of several rocks. Many rocks, big rocks, near. Well, which is it, many rocks or big rocks? <laughs> Probably both. You know, Can I try to like enough. maneuver or? Um... Oh no! You know what? <laughs> Just let the fucking ship go on autopilot. There's no need to maneuver around asteroids. Not at oh, all. Okay. I don't know why bring them up otherwise. I didn't know if it was, was going to be a thing. Dude, I was totally being 100 percent sarcastic. The please take the. Oh. Yeah, oh. please take the fucking wheel of the ship and navigate <laughs> us through a fucking asteroid field, please, so that we don't all die. Another small rock bounces off the top I... of the ship somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking take the goddamn wheel. Jesus Christ, go to Alec. What the fuck? All right, got it. Uh, um, to navigate the wood. field is going to be a hard three purple uh, piloting space check. Uh, however, due to the uh, dust and the broken sensors right now, you're going to add a setback die uh, to that. So three purple and a black. Jesus. Not ideal. Not ideal. Oh, can one of you, both of you are space pilots. Uh, yeah. Remember that was, someone can yeah. co-pilot to I, give. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, I also have skilled jockey, which means I remove a setback uh, from piloting check. Okay, so three purple, hard check. Yeah. And remember that the co-pilot can use the co-pilot action to assist. I will co-pilot then. What does the assist do? Does it just give him a boost? <laughs> oh. I'm not even on roll oh. 20, so I can't see what you just did. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, oh no! What is going on? I'm that is got three. Yeah. Oh, I still can't manage. <laughs> Admit it. The three success with threat looks pretty good right now. Yeah. <gasps> okay, co-pilot, you can manage Christ. the uh, side systems and any auxiliary equipment, which will allow the pilot to focus on flying or driving. Um, <laughs> if you make a successful co-pilot check which is a uh, piloting space at two purples average check um it can downgrade the difficulty of the pilot's next piloting check by one so rick make a average two purple check and we'll see if we remove a die from tally's uh there's check. a little bit of advantage there can you have a <laughs> Well, that nope. is not a successful check. All right, so everyone, uh, spend your XP on skills this time around. We'll go ahead and up those. That's literally what yeah. I just did, though. I spent I spent my XP upgrading my piloting. <laughs> so the good news is, Tyler, you didn't roll any threat, but you are going to give just a little love tap to uh, an asteroid that you, you didn't quite see, and it kind of just, like... Like there's a small hit, and you can you watch this small rock like disintegrate off the deflector shield out and to the port side, and you're like, oh, and, you know, small rock shields totally ate that up right as a larger one just you know crunches on starboard. Uh, so the ship is going to take three points of damage, um, but you didn't roll any threat, so that's good. Okay. Did we lose our satellite dish? Uh, no, you did not lose a satellite Why did dish. You see that? <laughs> um. 
Oh man, man! I, you know how excited I was to roll for piloting. You have no idea. I've been just like so excited for this, and that's what I get. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> um. So yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and get another one of those. We're gonna make it three total checks to get you out of the field or out of the the dust cloud. Um, so that's your first 10 minutes. And at the end of that 10 minutes, um, Sam gets the, the sensors, uh, back up online, which means that, that, uh, the setbacks fall off. Not that you didn't have that happening already. Uh, but you have full sensors now. The problem is you're just, you know, flying blind <laughs> or majorly impaired. So let's get, uh, a Co-piloting check from Kodo, followed by the piloting check from uh, Tali. So two purple for Kodo, and then still three for Tali. Okay. Kodo is successful, so... Well... Hell yeah. Uh, roll a... No, it doesn't go. matter, you cancelled everything out. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, you totally get to take one of those dice off, uh, but it oh. doesn't matter, because you win anyways. So you you make it to uh, two thirds of the way, and you got one more piloting check. So same thing from the Periol. I keep all mm. three this time, then. Excuse me. Bless you. Uh, yes, keep all three. <laughs> oh God! Damn it! Oh. Damn it. Wow. <laughs> right before we all die, uh, Sam. <laughs> Sam, you and I are going to have to do some crew, major repairs. And they <laughs> were so bad that everybody died. <laughs> the end. And the worst part so is, well. I have keen senses, so I see it happening. Yes. Yeah, that's the worst uh, part, for Bo sure. Boomy is quite... <laughs> Quite pleased to, you know, jump up in a chair and point at the rock right as it slams into the ship, like rock, and then you know oh the whole gosh. ship shudders. Rock, really close, the... big rock. But uh, another another three lovely damage to the cheeky Minoc as y'all limp out of the dust cloud. Sensors are now back up online though, um, so you can perform an average computer check to get a good scan of the area. Uh, to see what's going on. Samwise, you're up. Oh, uh, hang on. All right, so another computer check. What did you average? You said average two purple. Ha ha! All right, so with that information, uh, you are uh. Nice. You know two things. One, you are currently the only ship uh, on your sensors. It doesn't look like anyone else beat you here or jumped out since you guys have jumped out. So you are the only ship that you pick up immediately. Um, and let me make sure that y'all find the planet. I don't want to tell you that you do unless you do. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you. I'd say pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Right? Um, we, we can check that in a moment. Um, but the uh, using your scanners, you not only find where the planet is, and the planet is actually in that damn dust cloud, that nebula. Uh, currently, it looks like um, the like I said, the the nebula actually reaches a, a good chunk of this star system. And so now that you are outside of the nebula, you can you can see Chol, the star, and it matches the description that your uh, astrogation data has and everything. So you know you're in the right place. And then you, you use your scanners and you are able to locate the, the planet that should be Cholgana. Unfortunately, it, it is within the nebula. So the nebula won't be in the actual atmosphere of the planet, but any navigating in and around the planet is going to be kind of tough. Oh boy. All right. Good to know. Uh, Sam will head to the cockpit uh, once we're out and be like, uh, nice flying. But um, 
he does say it very sarcastically because he's been <laughs> jostled around a bunch. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we made it out of the dust cloud, which is great, but unfortunately that's where the planet is so if we have to land on the planet we have to go back through the nebula but currently there are no other ships around us so we are in the clear for the moment we're going to go ahead and take a five minute break here if you guys are cool with that i'm going to refill my okay. my water and stuff feel That's free to good. keep i have to take the dog out okay feel free to keep talking amongst yourselves and all that but i am going to refill my water and we'll just go ahead and assume sam at this point you can go out and spend several minutes locating the tracker you will eventually find it Alrighty, Yay. I will do that that was the next thing i was going to i'll say go ahead and uh, secure his tether so he's safe got it uh, hey, uh, oh, never mind. What's up? Oh, I was going to ask them an unrelated uh, question. Okay. I'm going to go get water then. Okay. Uh, for uh, the Old Republic, what server do you guys play on? Or not? Uh, you're talking to Steven, right? Because he yeah. walk the dog. Right. Oh, I thought uh, Blondie was still here. I think it's just the two of us. Oh no. Speaking of which, you need to kick your husband for me because I hate his constant puns. <laughs> oh it's you getting don't even worse. Know. Oh I oh I bet. Oh I bet. Like I just play a two D D games with him. Well, Star Wars and D and D and it's it's bad enough for me already. It's so bad. It's so bad. I feel your pain. I, I really do. He gets so much enjoyment out of how terrible I find his puns. It's ridiculous. Like, he'll make ones. He, not that he thinks they're that funny, but he'll make ones just because he knows that I will hate them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what he's been doing to me. He keeps like he keeps fucking uh pinging me and fucking Discord and like posting these really stupid fucking puns. Yeah, yeah. He'll do that. It just means he loves you. I'd rather not be loved at all. Too bad. I don't think it's optional <laughs> with him sometimes. Eh, there you go. Oh well. I'm back. What was the only unrelated question? Uh, I was going to ask uh, Biter and Blondie what server they played on and the Old Republic. Oh, that's definitely unrelated to me because I don't play that. It's fun. I like it a lot.
I'm back if all of you guys are back. I am. Sit here. I'm here. Do you have pizza? I do, but I will soon not have pizza because I'm eating it. I want pizza. Ooh, our ice cream. I should probably go get some ice cream. Because I have ice cream in the freezer. Yep, I'm going to go get some ice cream. I'll be right back. What a weirdo. How dare you. And I'm back. Hey, it's that guy. Sorry. He's been holding it for an hour. He was very excited to go. Hello. Hi. Got my new LaCrue. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're one of those people. <laughs> it was definitely an acquired taste, but then now I have them all the time, so I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, I mean, if you like drinking battery acid, then. Apparently she does. Mm. Definitely not a robot. Who is moving my token? I had myself nice on my seat. What? I did it so that uh, I could clump them all together and copy them in case I need to move to another map. Well, I'm going to make it hard on you and not let you. Mm hmm. Well, I've already done it, so suck a butt. All right, Maverick, come here. All right, so you guys are out of the dust cloud and the gas nebula, and you have used your scanners and found the planet of Tolgana. Again, the data you had from the message pod uh, gave you the, the ship's vector, and you know that it was above the planet when the pod was fired, but you do not know where it was heading because uh, the ship still had maneuverability at that point. Uh, but you do know that the ship was damaged, and so it is, is possible that it crash-landed on Zolgana itself. Uh, it, your ship is equipped with sensors, and you have now uh, repaired them. You got them working good enough to get you out of the, the cloud, and then you did some minor uh, rocks bounced off them, readjustments uh, once you got out here and had time while Sam was out and getting the... the uh, tracking device off of the ship. What do you do with the tracking device? What's it look like, Sam? I think he went to go get Sam ice cream. Sam is getting guys. ice cream. Oh, <laughs> like he literally said that. And I don't, okay. Sorry. Oh, okay, we're not I didn't back hear yet. that. Sorry. No, do we was, have Rick? We have Rick, Rick has pizza. I was giving no, y'all it all. I was giving y'all information to work on because No, I don't I need it. <laughs> because y'all can bring Sam up to speed once he gets back. But it's it's getting them closer to nine o'clock, so I wanted to like get things moving. Kinda of move on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe boat. he takes the tracker and he sticks it on his butt before he comes in. I was thinking like and I don't know, uh is there something we could like fling? You do not have a, to... a hyperspace pod. You do not have one of those, but you could put I... it on something and jettison that bitch out the airlock. We could yeah. just throw it really hard. Yeah, as long as it's like fling it somewhere and it's going to keep on going indefinitely until it hits something. I would and say we just try to deactivate it and then we can always use it as a decoy later if we need to, once we figure out who's tracking us. Yeah, that's a good idea. And, I mean, whoever follows us is going to end up in that same nebula, so they'll be at least a little bit stunned when they first come through, too. And if we've got that as, like, a backup, you know, just a disabled tracker. Can we disable it without it, like, okay, continuing back. to send off? Uh, make an easy computers check. Me or somebody Sam. Sam. better. Sam. 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 <laughs> let, 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 me, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. <laughs> We're trying to disable the tracker, Sam, without breaking yep. it. Since I'm the one that's spacewalking, it makes sense that I'm the one trying to do it. Helian on the stream says God that you fucking... should have put the tracker on a meteor. 
<laughs> we got pretty close to a couple of them. Um, Are they like sticky? Yeah, thanks crackers? for that, by the way. Just like throw it and hit a rock and have it stick. I'm sure uh, Boomy could fashion something out of duct tape. Uh, you fidget with it for longer than you'd like to admit, uh, and you tell everyone it's off, but <laughs> secretly you wait till uh, nobody's looking, and then you fidget with it for two more minutes and then actually turn it off. <laughs> All right. Well, throw it in a cargo hold then. We'll pull it out if we need it. Yeah, can I remove it? Was it like easy enough to remove off of the ship, or is it? Yeah, you, yeah. you took it off. I you're, think it's already you're off. You're back right? inside. No, okay. you missed it because you're getting okay. fucking ice cream. Ooh, what flavor? Chocolate and vanilla. Mm. I miss ice cream. I love ice cream. It's like my <laughs> one. It's like my snack of choice. It's my one like snack because I don't like candy or cake or anything. Okay, sorry to derail. Uh, so can we um? Just give me the tracker. I'll take the tracker. Give me, give me, give me. I'm shoving it in my backpack. Wait, no, Sam. Wait, no, Sam's like holding it away from like he's like <laughs> he's holding it up, up and down. Yeah, he's I'm like jumping. holding it up in I the am. air. He's like holding it up in the air and looking at you like very. If a droid could like give like the quirk eyebrow, that's what he'd be doing right now. Put my and, hands on my hips. All right, guys, quit fooling around. We need to make a game plan. <laughs> uh, I I don't think it's a good idea to give this to the little one. Uh, will somebody else please take it? <laughs> I look very offended, and I do my puppy face, and then I kick Sam in the shin. Which he doesn't feel. <laughs> yeah, probably hurts you more than hurts me, honestly. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe, Sam, maybe you should just hold on to it for a little bit then. IT3 well. is going to chirp in whether anyone asks him or not to say it's if you're planning on using it as a decoy it most likely will serve better purpose to be kept on your person rather than left on the ship uh, if we make descent onto Cholgana itself we can then place it uh, somewhere that would serve its best use as a decoy rather than simply leaving it on the ship and then not having a way. And he continues to ramble on until somebody stops him. He's he's totally teaching you guys how to... Smart use droid, right. Give me tracker, dumb droid. <laughs> Sam kind of slumps his shoulders and slowly hands it off to Boomy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put it in my backpack. <laughs> uh, Sam will actually uh, walk up to IT. Um... Do you have any information as to where the ship might actually be? We were only told that this was the last known coordinates. Master Roam uh, informed me that uh, you had pulled data from the pod. However, I only have the data that you were given. And in fact, uh, since my data was word of mouth, I assume you have more relevant information than I do. Uh, you have the last known vector of the ship correct yes uh we were told that it was here and that was all uh, i do not believe that we were told it was actually on the planet of Chogana, but there's a possibility that it is there considering the vector of the ship despite the fact that the information is some 20 years old uh, i find it more than uh, useful to begin scanning the planetary surface rather than searching uh, empty space. If we can do a full sweep of the planet and be assured that it is not on the planet, we can then proceed to check other bodies in this particular solar system. Uh, however, our best course of action right now would more than likely be to scan Cholgana itself and proceed from there. All right, there's our game plan. Now, just to get back through that nebula, uh, does it seem like we'd be able to go around it at all? So the planet's actually in the nebula right now. Uh, it, okay. If I'll go ahead and just let you know out of character, the, the planetary orbit keeps the planet in the nebula for two-thirds of its, its rotation, right? Oh, okay. The, the planet is not affected by the nebula because a large chunk of the nebula is only gas, right? And the gas from the nebula does not actively interfere with the atmosphere down on the planet too much. 
Um, and you, there's, there's visible pockets of dust and debris as well as points where the, the gas is too thick and you can't tell if there's other dust and debris or what. But the, the entire nebula is not bad. You guys just jumped out in a pocket of crap. Um, but yeah. you can uh, you can navigate closer to the planet and begin scanning uh, even at uh, a controlled orbit and keep yourselves away from the larger boulders and dust chunks of the nebula and you can begin scanning the planet. Sounds good. What do you guys think? You cool with that? Controlled approach and then scanning the planet? Seems like a good plan to me. You the boss. Right. Let's do it. Uh, but before we do that, um, let me uh, assess the damage that has already been caused on the ship. Six. Ah, uh, it gives her character. Right. Um, how much? Like, okay, because I don't have access to the ship's character sheet, so um, I haven't like, built one. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> like, so okay, so the six damage that it's taken, like, how much? damage can it take? I believe like, we it... have 20. Oh, Sam. Just have a little faith in her. <laughs> somebody can build the ship. Uh, you know, maybe one of the pilots or somebody can build the ship on the ship sheet of their character sheet, or do you want me to make a separate ship character sheet? It'd be cool if we had a separate one, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will... So we can all see it. Doesn't have to be tonight, though. Yeah. No, no I'm going to make it so that y'all can fuck with it. Okay. Alright, but if we have 20, um, Sam's just gonna assess the damage. Look over it. Make sure that we're still in okay shape. And then just kind of go back to the cockpit and be like, well, <clears throat> uh, we should be fine. Hopefully. As long as we, you know, avoid the large asteroids. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit sam i clap you on the back squeaky why not it's beautiful <laughs> all right so kodo and i'll fly us over towards where we think cholgana is sure you can give a uh, an easy piloting space check that one purple or no purple one purple purple and I'll probably still manage to mess it up. You can always get that co-pilot check though. <laughs> you know, to me downgrade to do that? that one purple into zero purples and automatically succeed. Hmm. Is, am I rolling against one purple? No, it's fine. If you made an average two purple a success co-piloting check, you would have reduced tallies to, uh, you would have negated the only purple dice on her check and she would have automatically succeeded which is funny hey. considering that your check would have been harder than her check <laughs> but moving on you guys can enter orbit around the planet of Cholgana uh, you are in the okay. fog cloud but no current hazards and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to start doing planetary scans and if no one is used to using shipboard uh, scanning equipment, then IT3 will be more than happy to teach you that the best way to go about doing that is to scan hemispheres for any debris fields, um, pieces of ships, etc. And then once you've cleared particular hemispheres, work on quarters within those hemispheres. But position the ship in orbit so that you can scan half of the planet and then scan the other half if you don't find anything and then narrow your search from there. All right, that sounds pretty good. Okay, so the scan for a hemisphere is going to take 25 minutes and it's going to okay. be an average computer check. Um, it would have two setback, but you have realigned the ship sensors. Uh, so just an average computer check. Is that me? Am I doing it? Yeah. I think that's up to you again, Sam. <laughs> Would I be able to help him at all? Sure. How? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I it's really good. don't. Power of the ascot. I'll look it up. 
just move on for now. I'll look it up and we'll figure it out for next time. Okay. Here we go. Hey. Huh? You know what? Maybe I should help. Nice. Oh, no. You got to try out. Never mind. Woo. Saw the blank greens. Uh, go ahead and give yourself a boost on your next check. Okay. Um, no success on this. Um, so it's going to take you the full 25 minutes. And then um, based on the readings that you get, you're actually going to spend an extra five minutes scanning just to be sure. Uh, and you get no readings from your first hemisphere. So you need to do the second hemisphere now. And you get a boost there. There you go. All right, so you've scanned the whole planet and you are pretty sure you know which hemisphere it's in. So now you need to begin scanning the quarters and this is gonna take longer. It's still an average computer check, uh, but it's gonna take you five hours per quarter. Um, and you're also gonna to have to Holy shit. keep yourself steadier than the bigger, wider <laughs> scan. So you're gonna to have to worry about, you know, meteors and stuff in the nebula much more. Um, so, so it's just going to require some piloting or it's possible, uh, depending on the results of the next average computer check. Um, no boost die this time, right? No, you used your boost die from your triumph. Okay. Ah, okay. I got a lot to read, so you just give me a second here. You're good. I'm still eating delicious ice cream. Okay, so no concrete results. Um, you do get a couple of pings, nothing solid. Uh, they don't come back as, as anything major. Definitely not a ship the size of the the banking class ship that you're expecting. But you do get a little pings that could be uh, could be metal, could be encampments, could be stuff left behind from people coming to like um, you know do the big game hunting and stuff like that. So there you have a couple of smaller pings that you could investigate further. Uh, but you don't have a super warm fuzzy on. Yeah, this is definitely something. If you want to check those out more, you're going to need to descend closer to the atmosphere. Or you can continue scanning. Uh, for now, I'll just continue scanning. Sure. If it's not, I'll, I'll I'll make sure to make note of that and come wanna, back to that to that section wanna, if I have to. Okay, I was going to say, do you want to rescan this section or scan another section? I'll scan another section. So same same scan, same check. Yep, same check. Fucking <laughs> you, you should be better. Uh let me read something on another page real quick. Sorry, I'm taking too long to figure out how to help you. <laughs> it's fine if I could just get a fucking success. Do, 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 do. So again, a bunch of small pings. They they could be metal. They could be escape pods. They could be gear left behind or stuff that you know, uh, metal based meteors that crashed into the planet. Um, no solid readings since you have failed to either fail or succeed yet. Ah. Uh. All right, move on to the next hemisphere, the next section. Well, you're doing uh, a quarter, so you got two more possible areas to scan. All right. So I'm I found it. To... I cannot oh. actually help you. <laughs> nice. The, awesome. the way assisted checks work is you take the highest uh, stat and the highest skill from both players. Ah. Oh. So well, I that's have good to know. three intellect, and you have four intellect. I'm not trained in computers, and you have two in computers. So no matter what, you would have higher skills than me. Okay. 
But so, like, if I assisted you, basically, you'd have mine to be able to roll, right? Yes. Okay. Give me another check. Mm-hmm. There we there, fucking go. go. All right, so you're nice. going to... You're going to spend... Three hours total on this uh, this scanning that you were doing. Um, you've identified about a half dozen areas that might be uh, debris. Um, they're spread over the distance of about 100 kilometers. Um, but you, you got about six or seven areas that could be um, large areas of debris. And you have... A couple of areas that you think could be like escape pods or smaller chunks of a ship or something, but there's you're definitely finding stuff now. Okay, and you said that we'd have to get closer to the planet to scan for like to get a more comprehensive scan. Yeah, you need to descend into the atmosphere for a closer look. Um, I would need to know which areas you're wanting to get a closer look at first. Um, like I said, you have about a half a dozen uh, areas that might be debris fields of a larger ship. Uh, and you have several that could be escape pods or smaller pieces or smaller ships, maybe. Okay. Um, I'll ask um, Tali and um, Kodo to move the ship in closer to the atmosphere, into the atmosphere. And I'll start on the um, the large areas that seem like they could be debris. You got it, boss. Sweet. You rolling anything? Yeah, I'm reading here. Okay, so you can uh, you can descend into the atmosphere. It won't even take a check. It's totally something that both of you guys are good enough at flying to do. Uh, and you can start. Um, searching but i need to know whether y'all are heading towards the smaller ping possible escape pod type stuff or any of the the half dozen debris could be debris areas yeah i'm looking for the big debris areas so we'll start at say like in the mid range of it so like number five sure sure um so drop into the atmosphere um it's going to be, there's still going to be some scanning to do. It's not all going to be visual contact because of the density of the jungles and forest and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, someone can make an average survival check to analyze the data and uh, kind of help the sensors basically filtering out the terrain and foliage uh, to help scans. In I the have. Future. I have two greens on survival, so probably not me. Uh, yeah, I've only got two greens. Higher than that. We all have two greens. Have two greens. Here's one yellow and two green. Yeah, oh, the there we one. go. It's your time to shine. Go, 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 go. I can do stuff. You and survive so trick. hard. Average two. <laughs> if you let us down, you're going out the airlock. I make no promises. Average to purple survival. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. So all these nice. people have been doing all sorts of fancy flying and fixing sensors and gas clouds and all this stuff. And then they get down on the planet and everyone's like, the trees and vines and stuff are really mucking up the <laughs> sensors. And you're like, oh, and you just walk up and like slap the side of the display and then <laughs> type a couple of keys and you... You chroma key out the trees as it was. <laughs> um, yeah. So what it's going to do is it's going to remove the setback that was going to be applied to the computer checks here. So whoever's running the scanners, Sam, uh, can continue to make average computer checks. Um, sans the, the two setback die. They do not apply. Um, unless you try to... Uh, scan beyond your range. Like you can open your scanners up beyond their uh, range to scan more. Uh, but if you're doing focus scans, then no setback. Yeah, I'll just I'll continue with focus scans for now. 
Aha. All right, let me read some here. Ooh. And for the record, now that we're getting planet side, I'm putting my clothes back on. <laughs> mm. We all thank you. All right, so you do find a debris field, and it is, it is scattered through the jungle. There's lots of debris, lots of various pieces. Nothing immediately jumps out as like, this is, you know, an engine, but there is scattered metal um, both beneath the foliage. And once in a while, you actually do see uh, chunks of what could be whole plating or spars, maybe even a, a piece of a smaller escape pod or something oh. is visible on barren rock. So there is definitely signs of, of a ship uh, that has crashed here. All right, I am going to call over IT3 and have him look at the scans and see if he recognizes any of this debris. IT3 will join you in the cockpit and he will remind you. Uh, it is important to note that I never actually served directly on the Sa'd Nala Or. Uh, while I did serve with Captain Harsal during the Clone Wars, I was never stationed on the ship that he chose to take and uh, disappear with. Uh, it, ah. This metal could be from any particular type of starship, uh, but it is definitely not enough information to exclude it being... It, there's not enough data to say, no, this is not the Sa'na Laor. Um, results are currently inconclusive. Well, let's go for a walk. I'm I'm reading the million ways of searching this damn planet right now. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> well, there's, there's, uh, there's all kinds of shit here. Should we wish we could land and go investigate, or I can continue scanning, uh, but it's <laughs> going to take more time. Hmm. Time is one thing I want to say we don't have, but it also seems like we're fine. I don't know. Nobody's found us yet. I would also like to point out again that there are many dangers on this planet. Uh, should we not be prepared? Ah, uh, yes. Those. So it says, many dangers is my favorite kind Angry of danger. <laughs> so a major debris field is the most obvious area within 30 kilometers uh, by a 10 kilometer wide zone uh, in which most of the debris uh, has fallen from whatever ship's descent this was. There's hull plating, spars, and even a smaller piece of an engine pod hidden by the foliage and terrain but there are a few rusty pieces of plating that have come to rest on bare rock and can be detected on a on your low flyover um, you can attempt survival checks to try and gauge like a general direction based on the uh, debris uh, but it's going to be a hard three purple check and you still have this is a bunch of debris, like I said, but you still have those things that could have been smaller shuttles or escape pods um, that you picked up on your scans, Sam. Okay. Hmm. All right, so I think what I'm going to... Oh, God, I, I suck at survival, so there's no point in me trying that. But I would like to see if I could figure out where the hell... I don't know. Uh, Sam's going to just ask the rest of the group uh, what what course of action would you all like to take? I can continue scanning, but there's no guarantee that I'll find anything uh, more conclusive than what I've already found.
That's not me. Mm. That's you. <laughs> um. <laughs> so we could do another survival if we want to. With you could Samira. do another survival uh, based on this debris field. You could go back up and do more scanning rather than mm -hmm. and rather than relying on visual like inspections. But again, y'all are. Y'all are above a jungle, and you're you're basing this off visual and smaller scans uh, in the local area. You're not doing a wide scan. You are you've brought the ship down, you know, not like right above the trees, but close enough that you mm -hmm. can see the ground, and and are are looking at the the stuff you have. You can go back up and do a bigger scan you can land and take a closer look at the actual debris to try and get more information from it but again right now y'all are looking out an airplane window and seeing metal on the ground and right. on scanners i mean i wouldn't be opposed to like jumping out let's check it out let's land and check it out do you want to oh, land? we have to land to jump out? <laughs> Thought I would preface, just in case. Do you want to get out at the debris field or at the possible escape pods? Uh, debris field. Um, okay. Because I think it might be easier to see whatever ship this was. It might be easier to see what its trajectory was from the ground. Okay. Sounds good. Let's do that. And survivors just mean we don't get to keep the loot. Is there an area for us to land? Uh, yeah, you can find one. I gotta read a paragraph real quick. Okay. There's this whole section about what y'all have to do when you actually land. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and consider yourselves landing, figure out if everyone's going, if some people are going, is IT3 staying on the ship? Like, start discussing those factors while I read this here blurb. This might be a silly question, but when we did scanning, did that also scan for, like, life forms? Or do you know if there's, like, organic life um, in the area? Do you, want to have, do you want to have scanned for life forms? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can scan for before we land. I can scan for life forms around the general area just to give us a clue as to what we're dealing with. Sure. Make a computer check. Life still too purple. Forms. Still, you love the little life forms. <laughs> hey, Sam. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. It's a jungle. I knew. Uh, I knew you were gonna say something like that. Uh, <laughs> you're mean. All right. I don't get any specific blips, just like lots of life everywhere. Yeah, you don't like nothing comes back as like there's a humanoid, but there the jungle is full of life forms and animals and plant life and stuff. Um mm -hmm. Okay. But um All right, so you guys can find a landing zone. Do you land? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you land. Yeah. Is, is everyone leaving, or is anyone staying on the ship? Is IT staying on the ship? So far, IT has been useless. But if he can identify the ship or its inhabitants, even though they'd be like picked over skeletons by now. Well we, already, we can talk to him over the comm. Leave him in the cargo bay. Yeah, yeah. We already we already established that he didn't actually serve on this specific right. ship, so he wouldn't be able to identify it anyway. Well, he's okay. He said he'd okay. That's totally fine. We'll just leave. No, him. He said what? what he can identify is the crew members, but that's no. it. Let's just leave him. Yeah. Um, I'm fine heading out. Does anyone want to take point? Let's see. Maybe someone with strong survival skills. I point. <laughs> well, if the little one's going to go first, I'll just walk mm. behind him.
All right. So we kind of have our little bit of a. I'm smart. I'll order. find it. I'm I'm reading these here bits about fear checks. Oh. Because apparently it's a jungle out there. It's like a jungle out there. <laughs> like a jungle sometime. But yeah, so you guys can find a, a landing spot near the debris field and you can and land. Like I said, there's debris scattered across like a, a 30 kilometer by a 10 kilometer field. Uh, but you can kind of find a spot near the, the best um, clumping of it, basically. Uh, and head towards some of those bits that you found out on like the the more exposed rocky areas um, and you can start uh, working your way through the jungle and it is it is a very dense and very thick uh, jungle there are uh, you know insect noises and and there's just life teeming all around you even with the the noise of you guys landing your ship here um, but you can begin making your way through the jungle to find some of those uh, pieces that you saw in your scans. Um, Zamira, if you were on point, you can make a survival check to start leading towards the aforementioned pieces of debris. Uh, and uh, you, you can even have a boost on this considering your you're uh, dealing with this kind of situation and dangerous worlds before, given your species and background. Um, it's still two purple. Uh, it is three purple. While Zamira is doing that, I'll take out my uh, infra binoculars and start looking around for any large creatures that might be in the area that might be trying to wanting to kill us. I am staying vigilant as well. Copy. I see all the things. You you do see lots of things. However, there is some threat. Give yourself a headache trying to see all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Saw too many things. Uh, that's all the nothing. I was gonna make a joke. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, that survival check is going to allow you to start piecing together um, bits of debris and the way that they've landed and the density of the debris and start to kind of get a general idea of the direction that the whatever uh, had, you know, whatever was crashing here. You can get like a, a vague general direction and you know that it was heading in the direction of the that escape pod the possible escape pod that uh you picked up sam so it was this debris all came off and then the next site would be where you picked up those uh that escape pod and then there was more debris on the other side of that so you have a general like idea of where it was going um uh, but it's going to be some hiking um and the jungle is very jungly. <laughs> I really don't like the way that this is set up, though. I'm airing my complaints here. Perhaps if we head back into the ship, we can uh, make our way a little further up without having to hike through the jungle and perhaps cause harm to ourselves. I was looking to try and give you information on your uh, infra binoculars there, guy. Um, but I'm really wishing there uh -huh. was just like a, a random encounters table. And there's there's not really. Huh, that's weird. Yeah. Like, I see some of the monsters here. I just don't see a good way to be like, roll these dice. And if you do, I get more like. The GM can do things at their discretion, and 
That seems weird to me. I mean, we can always do the the good old roll a d100 and see what the fuck happens. Yeah, I'm just scrolling further down uh, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. But how about a fight to mix things up? All right. <laughs> you guys, you guys I'll shoot it in the face. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, great. I attack the darkness. Uh, <laughs> as you guys are exploring this uh, this debris field, just so that we can keep things moving and get y'all something exciting before we we shut down in about a half hour, uh, you pull out your uh, uh, your binoculars and you start scanning, and and you see that there are several um, large like rodent kind of shapes, um, and they're they're all up in the trees around you. Um, and they, they've taken notice that you guys are here and they're kind of, as you guys navigate and Zamir is leading you through the, the jungle from one piece to another, you notice that these things are, are kind of following you. Rodents of unusual size. I didn't <laughs> believe that they exist. <laughs> yeah. And you don't, you're talking to one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just trying to make a Princess Bride reference. I know. <laughs> Love that movie. All right, I will relay this information to the party, though. Uh, <clears throat> there seems to be many large rodents in the trees that are currently following us. We perhaps may have to exterminate them. Do I sense, like, a family connection? <laughs> Do you ever? Mm, good point. Don't need to be rude. <laughs> uh, one of my talents is quick draw. So I may draw or holster uh, my weapon as an incidental instead of a maneuver. I don't know if I'm saying that too early or not. but I mean, you can, you can totally pull out your weapon. One of my talents is ready. not quick draw, but I'll go ahead and draw mine. Sorry. I, I sometimes I'm still a little fuzzy on how that stuff works, so actually I think I do a quick draw. <laughs> no, I don't. Never mind. <laughs> I do not have quick draw, but that's okay because I have an axe. And I'm just <laughs> holding that. So like I said, there's there's several of these things kinda like just keeping an eye on you guys. Um and it doesn't look like they're gonna move on you. They're they're you know, they're, it doesn't appear that they're predatory. They're mostly just curious that you guys are in their space. Um, they're very well camouflaged. They're, their skin very well mimics, like, the bark of the tree and stuff. And it wasn't until uh, the droid had pulled out his uh, infrared scanning that he started picking up on the fact that there's, you know, so many of them around. Can I spot them visually? Uh, if he starts, like... Pointing them out to you, you can. Otherwise, you can make me a uh, hard perception check. Well, yeah. Whenever I relay the information, I'll I'll kind of point out like where I see like the majority of them. How about we especially compromise like the closest ones with a simple perception check and two setback? Mm, no, do what I tell you. Hard is two or three. Three. Don't you have, like, excellent eyesight or something? Yeah, but it only takes away setback. <laughs> oh. You see... Wow, good job. <laughs> you see the creatures. Good job. How, how, how far away are they? Uh, they're... Everywhere is not the correct word. There's, you know, half a dozen of them or so kind of in the trees watching you. Uh, and they do seem to be, like... They don't all follow you. It seems like they're kind of territorial. And while you're in one section, several of them are keeping an eye on you. And as you move, the ones that you were approaching kind of st stay with you until you uh, move beyond their territory. Um, but what's going to happen is when you finally get out to one of those bigger chunks of the ship, um, 
and go to investigate it, you accidentally, uh, inadvertently, uh, find one of their little nests, and probably four or five of them go go scampering out as you mess with this chunk of the ship. Turns out that they were living beneath it. In the it had like collided with a chunk of a tree, and the tree was dead from you know having been impacted by this 20 years ago. And it looks like these things had been living in the the dead tree that this chunk of the ship had, you know, was still up against. And when you got too close, they they go ballistic and are going to kind of defend their spaceship chunk slash dead tree. I ready a grenade in my offhand. Okay. Uh, Got my hand on my blaster. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So this, they're like, they're home, basically. Yeah. We've like invaded their space. Yeah. Not anymore. It's my my space now. Let um, me just back up a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna have everyone make a discipline check at an average uh, two purples. Discipline, because I don't like getting you said my two hands pur- dirty. Two purples. Two purple disciplines. Oh, we need to dish a <laughs> I'm sure that nest is pretty gross. Anyone have any Purell? Oh, boy. I don't have a rod of dish a oh, you guys. No. <laughs> I, need, I need more, I need more dish a I'm right there with you. We both got one green. All right, so anyone that failed, uh, I'll let you know when that applies, but there is going to be some setback. Uh, just because, you know, I think big, big, scary Kurt jungle stuff, stuff's closing in, and and these things haven't outright attacked you, but they are making a lot of noise, and you know that that's not particularly good. Um, and so, uh, especially Zamira, who has spent some time in jungles before, um, knows that this is bad because what could essentially be prey is now making a bunch of noise and could start attracting predators and you guys know that this is this is very much like um you guys know there's the nexu here and you know that there's other big game that people come here hunting and you are now suddenly making a whole bunch of noise yeah i'm ready to shoot one whenever i can Okay, sure. Uh, let's let's have you go ahead and shoot one then. We're doing this then, huh? <laughs> oh yep. Well, I mean, scare them off somehow, us, right? right? Sure. How many Isn't purples? Our only way, way to go. Uh, are you shooting one of the ones at close range that's making all of the noise, or are you shooting at some? Of shooting the ones a loud one, yes. Okay, then preferably. One. With one, a clear line of sight. One one purple uh, as you are at short range. I think I killed it. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> wow. Good lord. Did you put all of your points my... into the shootings? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like... <laughs> okay. How uh, many... Base seven damage on my weapon. Uh-huh. And then one for each success. I think it's dead. Mm. It's, That's a it's lot totally of dead. You you get through its loaded. Uh, so it it does actually have a defense, uh, but even <laughs> if I rolled that, you are going to murder this fucking thing. Uh, so you susplode one and send them them scattering uh, in and around the trees everywhere. And I want everyone to roll for initiative as you guys get in a fight with a bunch of bark rats. As my uh, blaster is still smoking, I look at it and say, oh, I thought it was on stun. <laughs> not, that, not that it really matters for me. It's um, cooler vigilance. Uh, y'all were expecting a fight because, well, uh, Boomy was expecting a fight. You can choose whether when he started pulling out his gun, you prepared for the worst. I did pull out a grenade as well. <laughs> Hey. Where did I just put that? I know it's hmm. somewhere. Where is that? Did I really roll two blanks? 
Wow. I used all my luck already, guys. <laughs> All right. This is mostly yeah. to get y'all off the uh, the spaceship. I mean, look at my token. I've been off the spaceship. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Kodo is dead. <laughs> Kodo is very dead. No, no, no. I'm just walking on sunshine. <laughs> oh, God. I think I want to try out another one of my talents, <laughs> just to try to get used to using them. Uh, when I have rapid reaction, I may suffer a number of strain and add that number to my um, as a success for my cool check uh -huh. in initiative. And I can uh, I have one rank, so I can suffer one strain to add one success to my okay initiative. Good call. Which I'll do that now. So there's about 15 of these things total between the ones in the trees and the one on the ground. Um, Did you count the one I killed? There's about 14 of these things total. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me roll their initiative real quick. They're going to be in minion groups for anyone that played the starter set that remembers how uh, minion groups work. Uh, oh, that's right. Y'all ran from the stormtroopers. You didn't fight them. Um <sighs> And they are wasn't there for this, yeah. So. They are they are tougher <laughs> while they're a big group, and then as you do damage to them, instead of you know killing, it's it's one person on the map. But as you do damage to it, it it gets less attacks and has less stats because you are effectively you've killed two or three rat things in the group of five, right? Gotcha. Okay, so it's like swarm of rats in D and D. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I have two successes, two successes, one success, one success. That one's two because she took the strain. Yep. Um, so it looks like it's going to be three PCs, two packs of rat, uh, two PCs, one pack of rat, and then start over. So three of y'all, two of them, two of y'all, one of them. Okay. Where are our tacticals here? Are they mostly like medium range or? We're going to say that the group around the chunk of metal is short range. So y'all are at short range with that group. And then the guys up in the trees are all medium range from you, which will be the guys in the back and uh, below. Alrighty. Again, map is not literal. There are large groups of them spread out. I have a really important question. Yeah. Not really important. Um, yeah. Are we still on the ship? Because my map is still the ship. Yeah, mine is too. So yeah. Y'all got to tell me these things. Ha ha! Hey. Oh. oh boy, it looks so pretty. <laughs> those rats, those rat that? pictures are super detailed. By the way, I'm just like <laughs> fucking amazed by it. Actually, uh, well, again, What's... like I asked an entire slew of questions on like Sunday so that I could do roll twenty prep, and nobody bothered to answer anything. So I just didn't know what y'all was going to do. That had nothing uh, to it's... do with rats. It's mostly because of your puns. I just I, I tend not to answer any questions that you ask because I'm afraid to look at your fucking words on the screen. Yeah, puns are just so something. so shitty. Is this Don't my, ever say a pun again. Is this my I love punishment? Puns. Sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hate you. Am I? Oh, I'll tell you about my pun from earlier today, but not right now. I you'll, have, you'll... when I'm at work, so like 40 hours a week, I have literally no access to internet unless I want to use up all my data, so. I know, I I'm just talking shit to Corey, babies. who's trash talking my <laughs> fucking rat tokens. <laughs> oh, I was just giving you shit, dude, like, it really doesn't matter. Uh, that's, I mean, uh, fucking. And to be fair, they're not rat tokens. Yeah, I, I would have been totally, <laughs> I would have been totally fine with theater of the mind. It's it's nice to have some visual representation. All right, so someone shoot or stab something. 
Yeah. Yeah, who's going first? Uh, we got three of us going. So who wants to take the charge? I'll go first. Woo! Nose first goes. Time. I think Zamira should be one of the first to go because we're right there next to it and she hits hard. Yeah. Oh, wait, where'd the rat what? go? He's getting actual <laughs> rat tokens because he found <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Sorry, right, Zamira. Beanie Spanish. baby from hell. <laughs> oh, man. What's Beanie babies. I had those when I was a kid. What happened? What'd you say, uh, Ashley? How many purples and stuff? If you are at melee range, it is uh, one purple. Smack it. Ooh. That'll do. <laughs> well, I think Nora 2 Soak is really good. Yeah, that's awesome. I forgot. These things have a defense, so if you are attacking them, please roll a setback. Okay. Or I can just, you know what? I'll just, I'll put one in the pool and help me remember to take it out. All right. There's a setback in the DM pool, which should be added to all y'all's rolls. Ooh. All right. Uh,. Zamira runs forward and starts like vibroaxing through the nest. Uh, and she does a pretty good job. She she kills at least one or two of them in there. And pieces of uh, dead wood from the, the dead tree are flying everywhere. And she's just going ham on these guys. <laughs> cool. I'll mm. take a shot. Um... I think I'm at, am, am I currently at medium range from the Yep, medium range for the other two and short range for the, the pack in front of you. Okay. Um, I'll use my maneuver to kind of zero in on the pack, mm -hmm. which means I get a boost, right? And I don't need to add a, a setback die. It should already be in there, so go ahead and roll and oh, we'll see yeah, how it goes. For some reason I don't... No, like it's it's in my pool, which should add oh, okay. or subtract based on what you do. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's already in there. Okay. Uh, so no dice. You fire a blaster <laughs> shot through the trees, and you do manage to like, okay. you know, you you put the fear in them a little bit, but you don't appear to <laughs> to hit anything. Okay. Can I use my advantage to help out whoever shoots next? Sure. All right, cool. Whoever ends up going as our third player character can get that boost die. I'll go later. Kodo, Sam, go ahead. Go, Sam, go. All right. Um, I'll shoot at the uh, the ones that uh, I'll focus and shoot at the ones uh, that Samira is shooting at or smashing up. Sure. Uh, let's see. So that's one boost. Don't shoot me by accident. <laughs> and then... Ba-doop. Nice. All right, so like I said, the nest was probably five or six of them, and you guys are clearing them out pretty good. There's probably only three of them left. All right. Um, whoever goes next on our side has a boost. But it's their turn now. All right, because Dolly, you, and Zamir. Cool. Uh, rats. They have an agility O three. 3 um, The rats directly engaged with Zamira are going to go first. Uh, Zamira, remind me, do you have defense uh, on your armor? Where would I see that? On your character sheet. Let me look. Under where it says defense, on the wound strain defense encumbrance, up at the top, you do have one defense. So these guys get a setback die. Sorry, I'm 
still learning where all the things are. Uh, that is fine. Uh, they do not hit you, but they do roll a bunch of advantage, so they're going to give a boost to their friend. Uh, and the next one to go is going to be one of the ones who uses uh, its entire turn moving because it is at medium range. Uh, remind me, can can you do that? Can you maneuver and then use an action to take a second maneuver if you don't attack? Yes. Okay, so uh, a bunch of rats are going to scurry towards uh, Boomy. And then PC turns. Actually, it might be a strain and you might still get the action. Or is it a strain for a second action? I know that you can take the strain for a second maneuver um, and then still get the action. Uh, I don't know... Uh, I don't know if, like, NPCs can do that. I need to learn more about this damn system. Uh, I was looking at whether I can just trade my action to move closer to you. I I would say yes, but I really don't remember. Uh, we'll go for now just to keep combat moving along so that the other two players can go. And somebody look that up at some point. I'm working on it. Go, Boomy and Kodo. Kodo, you want to go ahead? I can do that. Uh, I will attack the... Where am I? Oh, I'm over here. I'll shoot at these guys. I don't know if that's doing anything. Mm, no. How do I make it like... Are you on the Just mouse pointer? Hold. Yes. Then click Just and click hold. hold. Haha. -ha. Okay. That's uh, two I purple. Was double clicking. And that's just ranged. Uh, ranged light. Light. Two purple. Okay. So. You get a boost though, right? Yes. Yes, you do get a boost. Oh. Okay. So. So two, two purple, purple, one blue, and a boost. And a boost. Unless you're there focusing, we go. you might get two boost. If you're not moving. You can use your maneuver to aim to get a second boost, yeah. Then I'll do that. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't see any reason to move. And ranged. Light, where are you? There we go. And away we go. Oof. Wow. It doesn't say, oh, that's right, you're using just a regular blaster, right? Mm -hmm. Just a... I think it's a six, six damage. Yeah. Okay. I actually added it as a weapon in the combat tab, but I don't know... You can click on the weapon in the combat tab. There should be a, a die button right there where you can just click. Yep. It's right next to critical. It says yeah. there's a damage and then critical, and then there's a little die roller right there. And I just do that. Yeah. But it doesn't add in like my ranged light. Right? Uh there's a, a skill drop down box that says your which skill you use to roll. And as long as that says oh, ranged light, you're good. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. Let me try that again. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> And that's how you do it. <laughs> okay, that's yep. cool. You 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 zap one of them their womp rats out of the pack, and uh, <laughs> uh, I I'm gonna take that threat you rolled on the initial roll just because I'm a dick like that, and I'm gonna do secret things <laughs> behind the screen. All right, All right my turn, Ricky. right? Time to show them what you got. Uh. Just so you know, rules as written say that you have to take the two strain to maneuver twice, and then you would still get an action. Okay. If you want to take the action, I don't care. You can attack me. That's fine. It's just a rat combat to keep you guys excited. All right. So I'm going to attack uh, the rat pack next to me. They went from medium to engaged, right? Yeah, they're engaged. All right. Going to turn these guys into mice crispy treats. <laughs> Good job. Boom. Duh. I'll use my 
That's a seven base damage, by the way. And uh, I can read. Oh, sorry, I didn't say that there. Uh, I'll use the three advantage to give the next person two boost. Okay. Uh, the final pack is going to go, and it is going to use its maneuver, moving from medium to uh, short. And in its turn, uh, they are swarming you guys now. Like, they were pissed that y'all were mucking with their house, but now that you're attacking and shooting at them, you are drawing the ire of all of the ones down in the trees. So these things are, they're not necessarily all on the ground, uh, but there are, remember each icon is indicative of a pack of them. So there may be one or two down on the ground close enough for Boomy to get to, but there's three or four up in the trees bouncing from limb to limb and approaching. Um, and that's going to bring us... Right, uh, <laughs> you could have uh, you could have bought one on the on the uh, wheel, but no one wanted to go shopping about uh, Sam. Because I'm the smart person. Uh, but back to the top of the initiative order. Also, I finally found in the core rulebook where it talks about fear. Mary, oh, you wanna I'll... take two boosts or? Sure. Right. Could I Sorry, attack I next and use my own boost? Would that be allowed? That is a good question for you to go look up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the way that turn order works, that actually is allowed because we choose turn order, mm -hmm. I think, I by, think so by each turn. Or it by just each says like the round. next PC. It doesn't say it can't be. Yeah. Here. But so go ahead, same. Samira. You can use yeah. my boost. It's okay. You yeah, sure? I, I won't be too upset. So that's two blue guys, right? Yeah. He might just sneak. He might just sneak a grenade in your pocket later. You know. Oof! Oh, this boost turned feel... out great for you. Yeah, I almost <laughs> feel really bad for those rats right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're gone. Zamira's pack was much more um, clustered because it was the nest of them. So she has made very quick work of them things. <laughs> Next turn. Any other things on your turn, Zamira? Uh, can I, since I didn't move, can I move now? Yep. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now, can Zamira's one advantage go to someone to help out? She should be able to pass that as a boost, I believe. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's one advantage for one boost and three for two. Alright, go for it. Does anybody specifically want to go next? No, you go ahead. Alright, I will yeah, yeah. shoot at that pack. Okay. Um, they are within short range of at least Boomy. Uh, you tell me whether you feel like you were close enough to him to also be in short range. If you are in short range yeah. of this one, you are medium range of the other one, and vice versa. So. Yeah, I would say I'm in short range now of that one. Sure. Um, is that one purple or? Yeah. Sorry, just double check in there. I am. My maneuver. Okay. I'll snap dizzle. <laughs> Woo! Oh, uh, it's my triumph for it. Let's see here. Yeah, you want to pull up that sheet and see what you want to spend it on? Yes, I don't have it up right now. Sorry. One sec. I That's what he said. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea. What's the triumph sheet? Where is that at? Yeah, with that, um, it's going to be the easiest way to find that problem. It is, is that in the advantage and threat references? Player advantage and threat uh, reference, yeah. Got it. Opening. Saying what I'm doing. Okay, so you can upgrade the difficulty of the targeted character's next check. Mm -hmm. Upgrade any allied character's next check, including that of the current active character. Uh, do something vital, such as shooting the controls to a nearby blast door, or steal them, or seal them shut. Here. 
Go ahead and seal the blast door shut. Oh, also, uh, <laughs> I see the top also a single. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, a single triumph does work I... as like two, three, or one uh, advantage. Yeah, I can send a boost and all that great stuff. Um, I think I will. Oh my gosh, there's so many options here. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Yeah, this this system has almost like a lot entire, of weird rules. Yeah, almost mm. this entire list I can pretty much pick. From. That's a lot of words to read. Um, one of them says, "Notice a single important point, a weak point in the attacker." Mm -hmm. Um, I will use my triumph to to, like you were saying, like they're coming at us from all sides and stuff, and they're kind of swarming. I will use my triumph to see if, like, um, if the nest is thinning or, like, where a weak point would be. Okay. Um, and then um, I'll memorize that list for next time so I can sure. make a better decision. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm reading, like, five things, too, so. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Yep. Um, uh, Got it. I will I will keep that in mind. Uh, you are noticing the the weak point, and I will give you a boost on your next attack uh, tally. Not that you'll get one by the time I'm done here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask. Did it seem like I did any damage to those that pack in front of me? Yeah, you did a pretty good job of thinning them out. Okay. Uh, there's still at least two or three of them ramping around. Sorry, I forgot I hadn't said that. No, that's all right. I'm learning about things deep in the jungle. <laughs> things that you guys are awakening with all this laser fire. Ah. And the jungle. The and the heart. barking rats. <laughs> all right, can I go next? Sure. sure. Uh, would it be possible for me to move here with one movement to get a clear line of sight? Like, how far would I be? So again, on these guys. we're we're theater of the minding with visual aids. Uh, you don't need right, right. to worry about Kodo and Zamira there. I, I'm really just asking more like for my range. Uh, you can turn around, and there are rats up in the trees at medium range behind you. So you can shoot over Kodo and Zamira at one of the ones up in the trees. All right. While still. So I'm I'm gonna shoot at that side, turning my back on the other guys. Okay. And uh, feeling that the group didn't get my pun to full effect, I'm going to say it louder. I'm gonna turn these guys into mice crispy treats. <laughs> <laughs> God damn you guys in the triumphs! Wow. The pun. Can I use my triumph to up. instantly kill them? Please use it better than. Actually, you can inflict a critical injury. I think. Let's do that. Do you want or to... you could. I want to critically injure that damn rat. Okay, roll oh. on the critical injury chart. How do I do that? You roll a d100, and the injury chart is. Actually, hang on. Go to critical injuries. There's a tab for it, and your uh, go to critical injuries, and then oh, just there is. roll critical. Yeah, but is that for him? I don't think so. Uh, I. I don't have a character sheet open, so I'm just making sure. Interesting. 79. Attacker may immediately attempt another free attack against you using the same dice pool as the original attack. Okay, so, oh, I, think so, so I get to do another attack? Yes. Uh, against the same... That did show up on mine, but it's all right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's That's for... Yeah, yeah that is for me. It's all right. Oops. <clears throat> it works for now. I just noticed it in the character sheet earlier, and I was like, well, that's fucking nice to have. And that's a base seven damage there. Okay. <laughs> you zap a rat. Uh, threat Threat is piling up, though. You guys are getting some advantages, but there's also some threats going on here. Uh, Rats all, folks. Yeah. <laughs> that's rats. another guaranteed triumph. Yeah, rats what you think. <laughs> we'll see about that's rat. despair. Oh, no. Rats off to you. <laughs> <laughs> All 
<laughs> that three of three of us have gone now. Yeah, so I just rolled the attack for uh, the southern rat pack, um, using <laughs> cashing in on some of those threats you guys have been rolling, uh, and I got mm. four successes against you there, uh, Boomy, uh, which is going to bring your your total damage to six. Um, not anything. I can't crit you or anything, but. You're gonna get swarmed by these fuckers. They, there's like, they're lashing you with your, uh, with their tails. Uh, they're very whip-like tails. Uh, they're scratching you, and they're, they're very like hit and run tactics, right? Uh, you're not. But just, I'm one of you. You're not, <laughs> you're not just getting hit by all of them at the same time, and then they stop. Like, one yeah. of them like whips you as it runs between your legs and scampers off, while another one like bites you in the back of the leg. And by the time you turn to see where that one's at, one's jumped out of a tree and landed on the back of your shoulder and like bites you in your big ass fucking ears. And, Rap like, bastards. You you are every action movie star that ever gets attacked by small mice or cockroaches or whatever mm. you're doing that like. Flaring. The compies from Jurassic Park. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, and then the next one is going to take its turn. Uh, Zamira has a setback die because of her armor, so I will note that here. And so I didn't actually take damage. It just lowered my damage yeah, output, eight. right? You took six, I think. Six. Yeah. Oh, okay. Completely misunderstood that. Then. Minus your soak. Yeah, so yeah. Well, I'm not... I'm just telling you, you get the flat six, so apply soak and stuff like gotcha. that. Gotcha. Yep, um, yep, yep. I'm good. Two damage to Ashley, even after the defense, so apply your soak to that, hun. Does that mean she takes no damage? She has to have at least two soak. <laughs> I'm assuming she does. My soak is five. Oh, Fuck shit. yeah, holy shit. <laughs> Fucking we all tanky. should just stay on the ship and let her. Know, right, like Samira just <laughs> comes yeah, out, seriously. like a Nexu like, comes. She's just like, yeah. hit me, motherfucker, do it! I dare you. Yeah, I thought like three was good. Through like waist deep of these rats, just like <laughs> they, in their dice pool of one, two, three, four, five dice, uh, three of them came up blank. So, <laughs> uh, two character turns. All right, um, I'll go next, uh, if you don't mind, Kodo. Go for it. All right, I'm going to uh, take aim and shoot at this fucking little fucker right here. Sure. So that's a boost, and it's one purple for uh, close range? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and a setback. Oh, wait, no, you already no, have that. Setback's in there, so don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. You you kind of scatter them. They like scatter. Uh, some of them start climbing back the trees. Uh, some of them are running in between trees and kind of darting around and stuff. There's there's probably three of them left, but they are they're no longer one consolidated pack. They're just individual uh, rats jumping from tree to tree and stuff. Especially now that the the main nest has been destroyed, there, uh, you're you're taking away a bit of their resolve in this particular fight. Okay. Cool. Finish it off, Kodo. All right. Bring it home. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that thing where I I shoot them. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that Thanks. one thing. Very, not, very yeah. sexy thing. <laughs> so, just the same as it did before. Yeah, it did before, right? Nothing's yeah. changing. Mm, All right, yeah. and away we go. Whoa! That is a very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That is uh, a lot of advantage, <laughs> dude. That's, he's not only it's like the triumph and all that yeah. fucking advantage, but he still fails. Just, <laughs> I love this system. I love how this system works. It's very interesting. Yeah, it was the classiest yeah. fail you could ever do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was an amazing fail. Yeah, so you yeah, can, you it can style. impose setback on them. You can boost your allies and stuff, but you you definitely do not hit any rats. You like. 
take out a chunk of a tree that they were on and scatter them real good and stuff, but you made no <laughs> rat <laughs> impact. And you were not aiming for that chunk of the tree. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, I will boost the next person, I guess. Yeah, so you guys watch as wow. this, this laser bolt. You can bolt, boost like, twice. That's true. Uh, you can do and also two use your triumph too. double boosts and the triumph. Yeah. That I want to just make sure whoever gets the next shot gets the job done. <laughs> In fact, we're going to go ahead and remove those as they scatter. And you guys watch as just, like, he, he really lined up the shot good. And then he fires, and a single laser bolt, like, blows the limb that one of them is on apart. And then you guys, like, see it disappear off into the canopy. And, you know, <laughs> typical, like, like those birds go uh, flying, you know, yeah. uh, typical movie scene where something rustled the the trees and the birds go flying far away in the jungle kind of thing and so the one that was on that limb like falls to the ground and scampers off and the other ones that sam had scampered uh or scattered uh they all kind of disappear back into the woods on that side and leaving you only with the uh the pack down south which is all about nibbling on boomy right now I'm a tasty guy. <laughs> uh, All right, and cool. it's back at the top off? of the order, yeah. All right, so I got two boost. And I'm at close range. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. Uh, Kyle, like, why don't you let me handle this one? <laughs> Oh, well, she can give you two boosts. That's good. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Hey. I want to critically injure it, even though it's dead. <laughs> okay. You do that. <laughs> Everyone. <clears throat> there is there is a loud roar coming from the direction that Kodo's last shot just went. I believe it would be beneficial for us to hurry our way back to the ship. Ah, yes. But we just got here. I second and that. And we were having I, so much fun. But yes, if, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> really? If, if, we're leaving? If, if you wish to continue... <laughs> if you wish to continue braving the jungle, uh, we can, but it may be unhealthy for us to do so. Getting some Monster Hunter vibes in here. We won't get know. back to the I, ship I'm in time. I'm doing pretty good out here, so. <laughs> All right, Samira, we will uh, talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, I do mean, you guys want to retreat back to the ship? Do you want to continue exploring the debris field? Do you want to? How far is the ship? Uh, probably took you. 10, 15 minutes worth of uh, actual jungle clearing to get out this far. You spent a couple of minutes oh, like okay. looking around from where you landed. You you looked around for some debris, and once you found a couple of pieces, you that's when Zamira like started forging and, and kind of following the the scatter. But again, there's there's debris everywhere, so you guys can and head away from the roar. You can head back towards the ship. Uh, there's there's lots of options. Um, you know that about, uh, 20 kilometers away, I think. Let me verify that. Uh, we'll call it 12 kilometers away was about where you got that, uh, reading on the possible escape pod. Let's go find metal. Big cat won't bite. I wish I had your optimism, Pookie, but I think we may need to, uh... Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, how far away do we think the next zoo is? Sam? Uh, uh, I don't know that it's the next zoo. I, all I know is that I heard a roar in the direction that Kodo's shot went, and it was loud. And that it's probably very dangerous. 
Because you kind of immediately said we should go back to the ship, which I trust your judgment. I just don't. For Maybe clarification, it, it, was, it was a distant uh, sound, but yeah, it's not like there's an animal 150 feet that way. No, like it's the jungle. There's jungle noises and you guys made a shitload of noise. I'm going to hit myself with a stim pack real quick. Sure. We could just uh, we could just move quickly onto the the area of interest that we're looking for, and the area if the and then just like do a wide arc around this area on the way back in case they come to that. Like the so the possible escape pod is not in the direction of the roar, uh, and it's going to take you some hiking to get there. Uh, you don't you didn't go check out that area before landing, so you don't know if there was space to land the ship there or whether you're going to have to hike there or what. Um, to, just to try and help you make an informed decision, uh, you were able to locate a landing zone here, um, but you guys did not go check out. I, I asked thrice, and you did not go check out with the escape pod, uh, possible uh, escape pod landing. Let's keep going, guys. Yes, uh, as as long as <clears throat> as long as we move away from this area, we should be well within our range to get away from whatever made the large sound behind us. It's not coming from the direction that we would be heading, so we we don't have to retreat to the ship, but we should keep moving. Okay. Still, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. the so. Which direction are we headed then? If we're not headed to the de debris, I don't get what you're. The debris, no, the debris is everywhere. The debris is like a ten kilometer wide, thirty kilometer long. You know, if you march around in this area, you're going to constantly be finding chunks of metal, and it's it's ten clicks wide and thirty clicks long, right? Mm -hmm. Within that debris field. Uh, Sam picked up a piece of metal that he thought might be like a small shuttle or an escape pod or something. And that okay. is that is 10 to 12 clicks away from where you are now. Uh, mm -hmm. But you guys did not go like see if there's a ship landing zone, uh, you know, enough clearing in the jungle to land there. Y'all found the first landing site you could find in the debris field and set the ship down there. And the, I, um, I misunderstood that as well, too. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, basically our Sorry. point for landing and coming here was to see the direction that the debris was falling in, like so that we could find where the main hull of this ship would be. And okay. to see if the debris you found was from the ship. Right. Y'all right. started picking up stuff that could have been debris, could have been uh, encampments left by hunters or whoever. Y'all landed to see what stuff y'all y'all were picking up because once you came in and did the visual, you started seeing like bits and pieces of stuff. So y'all then found kind of a, a clearing and set the ship down and started checking out the, the debris field on foot. But from your aerial scans and visual, like there's bits and chunks everywhere. This is not like you were standing in a clearing and there's just metal everywhere where you're at. It is like, you find a piece of metal here and then you hike through the jungle for a little bit and then you find another chunk. And these aren't like, like the size of your desk chunks of metal. Uh, they, they range from, you know, boulder size pieces. Cause this was a, theoretically a capital ship, right? It's a huge thing. So you find a couple of meters so wide pieces here and there and smaller flecks of stuff throughout the jungle. So I'm going to check out the one that we're close to then, the nest. Mm -hmm. uh, are there like any markings on it or anything like that? Uh, nothing that you can see. Um, about but, how big is this piece here? Boulder sized, I'd probably say six or seven feet tall. And it's not just a piece of metal. Like it, it's very clearly a piece Part of, of the hole. Uh, it's something, right? It's a chunk of hole. It could be a piece of like a starship deck. Like it's clearly from a ship or a machine or something. It is not just one smooth piece of metal. There's, there's wires, there's pieces and stuff. And enough that, like I said, it impacted this tree and kind of killed this tree, but there was chunks of the tree still in and around it. And once y'all got up on it is what disturbed the, the rat nest. 
Is there anything I could help, like, re No, that makes sense now. Re-clarify? Uh... While I'm checking out the metal, is there anything interesting in the rat nest? I mean, lots of interesting things to you, but nothing that directly impacts the mission. <laughs> uh, Leah, is there any way I could better, like, explain that? Is there anything you still oh, have? Oh, no, you're fine. No, I yeah. think we're okay. So, Sorry. the best way to paint the image is you did not find the crash of the ship. You you found a trail of pieces falling off of it as it came into atmosphere. Uh, and okay. so there are bits and pieces here and there. Uh, and what this landing did for you is help figure out the general trajectory that it was going. Because yeah. everywhere you looked from the air, you just found pieces here and there. And you would kind of get to the edge of where you would stop seeing pieces and kind of head back into the debris field. But the debris field is, it's a big zone. Like, this was a capital ship. All right, so we figured out what it was, so we probably should head towards that escape pod then. Yeah, because the escape pod's the next... Yeah, that, that's the direction it was moving in uh, based on Zamira's um, uh, survival check. So that's the next best place for us to look. And then we can get more clues from that and continue forward, or if we have to, we can backtrack, backtrack to the ship after that and, you know, find our way around. I... I... Hey, uh, you're not coming Scream. in, babe. My mic cut out, sorry. <laughs> I have small legs. Let's fly the ship to the escape pod. <laughs> yeah, okay. sounds good. Well, there is, a, there is always the chance that <clears throat> there won't be a suitable landing spot near the escape pod. You can carry me. Only one way to find out. Uh, I am not built for manual labor. Perhaps Zamira could carry you. <laughs> Zamira? Perhaps I could find some more magnets to stick on your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what? Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to immediately search my butt. <laughs> Do I you find, find a bunch of magnets? magnets. <laughs> Do I find a bunch of magnets on my ass? What a great way to end the session, huh? <laughs> yeah, you do find a magnet that says, uh, <laughs> my other right is your mom. Look at this, Sam looks at it. I don't have a mother, and he just drops it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tali, you see that he does not find the magnet. That uh, says, I break for no fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you guys get in the ship and we're going to have you find a, uh, you're going to find where the, what you believe to be a pod is at. Could be a pod, could be a small shuttle. You can't get a uh, sight on it due to the foliage. Uh, from the air while in your ship but you do find a spot that you can land and we're going to have you go ahead and land and exit the ship and then we'll cut the session there and we will start next session with you guys making the hike because you're going to have to hike up to where this thing is at it's kind of like um it's kind of at the bottom of like a mesa or a like a a cliff face basically and there's a, a crevice that kind of leads up towards the top of this mesa However, jungle on top of the mesa is too thick for you to land there, so your best bet's going to be to land down hill from it and then make the hike up. But we're going to go ahead and have you guys land. Uh, we could always repel in, guys. Get Kodo or Tally hovering. Get a nice power cord lower us down. This sounds like an excellent plan. But uh, <laughs> for next time... <laughs> Um, and then now that I better have read the fact that it references back over to the core book on how to do this whole fear thing, uh, we're going to have you guys land and, and, and lower the ramp and be walking out into the jungle when we start next session. But I need, uh, an average perception check from anyone that wants to kind of, to scout the area. 
and I will need uh, average discipline checks from everyone so that I can more properly implement that fear of work first time walking into the jungle uh, because now y'all have seen the jungle and you know there's monsters in here and you, you've heard some roaring so let's get perceptions from folks and discipline from folks and, uh, uh, get rid purple? of the setback die you bastard no I'm sorry setback guy I, I yeah that right totally there. screwed me <laughs> <laughs> yeah I demand a reroll. Re right, reroll, yep. <laughs> There's my perception. And help me remember, Ooh. guys. Uh, dark side, light side points. We we haven't been using those, and we reroll them every session. Oh, so yeah. help me remember that those are a thing. Okay. Yeah. I forget about them as well. Kodo rolled a damn triumph, though. Oh, that was on my... Uh... Wow, we are um, getting perception. a lot of threats. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. not good. We're going to have a wonderful start to next session. So the good news <laughs> is, is Kodo rolled that triumph, though, on the perception check. And the perception was to kind of gauge uh, wild animals and whether there was any aggressive creatures in the area. Um, but Kodo's triumph, I'm going to let him use that to say if, the, if you want, you can have the noise of the ship landing kind of spook stuff off. Uh, if you want to at least uh, clear out the immediate area around the ship. Seems I, I can get behind that, yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to note uh, the results of you guys' fear checks and stuff, and I will let you know at another point, but we are already at 10.20. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and oh, wind sorry. down. I need to do my discipline. It was too purple. Uh, too purple, yeah. Uh so I'll tally that stuff up tomorrow. Oh, Ooh. boy. Oh, boy. Oh. Um, <laughs> I saw... I am a, I am a very uh... scared robot. It's the magnets. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> yeah, the magnets put the fear of God in me. Call it, saw a couple of fails in there, both on perceptions and yeah. on, on uh, fear. And so I'm going to do some reading on what exactly that means, and I will provide that information to you guys on Discord. And I'm going to do much more reading because I didn't actually get to do much uh, prep this week between school starting and work just being super awesome. Uh, but now you guys you guys are on Cholgana, and you're fairly certain that you have found uh, the uh, the debris field left by what you... What you're pretty sure is the Saw Nala Ore. So you think you're on the right track. Uh, however, um, starting next session, we are going to start our strain rolls at the beginning of the session uh, to see if you guys have some of that uh, obligation, is the right word there. Our obligation rolls to see if you guys have some of that glorious weight of your obligations weighing down on you and we're going to find out who's a little spooked of the jungle considering there are crazy monkey rat things in them and who's worried that they might not look up to top notch since they have bumper stickers on their ass <laughs> <laughs> and you nice. guys have all week to decide who carries me up the mesa <laughs> not it nose goes <laughs> mesa think you should uh -huh. walk your damn self Oh, yeah. <laughs> Either that, or we're just gonna tie a rope to you and drag you. I have very stubby legs, guys. You could fashion be fine. some sort of cart. <laughs> Get I three right. to to carry him. It was your choice to be a short, stubby furry man. <laughs> I was born this way. <laughs> But you did it. Fun session, guys. You didn't get arrested. Yeah, you fun. got out here. Good times. You only drove the ship into two large rocks. <laughs> you navigated a gas cloud, and you got on the planet. Oh, so... his Discord just totally crashed. Sorry. He's talking to me, and I'm not paying. I'm listening to you guys. <laughs> oh. Sorry. I'm back. Oh, there you go. I was just but saying, no, like, I know y'all only got to fight like some rats and stuff, but you did it. You didn't get arrested on the wheel. Uh, you got the droid. You only drove into two uh, Volkswagen-sized rocks. Uh, you <laughs> you uh, 
got rid of the tracking device. So remember five XP for uh, your wheel role playing and five for finding and disabling the tracking device. So uh, I will look to see uh, what XP comes from finding the debris field since you did all that scanning and stuff. And we'll toss in a couple of XP for them, them rat things just so that y'all got to shoot some stuff this time around. Because I know oh. how much Zamira likes uh, Axon. Yeah, well, poor, poor Zamira wasn't able to do much until the fucking fight. <laughs> she, she, yeah. did, she did that she one. She nailed that survival that check. That survival yeah. check yeah. back on the computer where all you kids was arguing about the ship controls and she walks in and just like alt F4s. Yeah, both of her, both of her survival <laughs> checks were very yeah. clutch. <laughs> oh, definitely A plus there. Plus, her character is very much built to be like a survival lead through the jungle person. So this is why the Pikes hired her. So as you guys start marching through the jungle, you're going to find Zamira's character much more clutch for the party uh, because she will. Oh yeah, I'm going to be fucking. I'm sure. She has all the survival and all the resilience and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to be fairly useless in the jungle. <laughs> it's... There's not a lot of a lot of metal and computer stuff for me to deal with, so it's not gonna be fun. You got your hands full with all the magnets anyways. <laughs> Fucking magnets. How, How do, they, do work? they work? But it's an insane, right? How how do they pull each other together? It just doesn't make sense. The power of love. <laughs> I'm gonna Tide goes in, tide goes out. Can't explain that. I'm going to go lay in bed and read about uh, fear in Edge of the Empire. All right. All right. Doesn't, doesn't your wife know all about magnets? Like, <laughs> Yeah, she went to like five years of schooling for it. I don't know. <laughs> nice. I am going to go play more of the Old Republic. Ooh, have fun. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah. Hey, what server do you guys play on? I don't even know. If you said it, I might recognize it, but otherwise I don't remember. Uh, I know the servers have changed a lot over the yeah, years. Yeah, they combined the had to. Yeah, they did. They actually just did it recently. So I'm on a server that I wasn't on previously because they had, like it transferred all my characters to one of the ones that got combined. Yeah, I, I even uninstalled it. I, I, I got very frustrated with it the last time we played. I don't see how mm -hmm. you have such.